Okay, we're recording. Thank you. Good evening. It's March 4th, 2024. And while this is a regular meeting of the town council, the focus is primarily on the proposed resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza. The open meeting law allows us to continue holding meetings. You cannot hear me. Can we adjust the mics, please? Can you hear me now? The open meeting law allows us to continue holding meetings remotely. However, obviously we're not doing that tonight without a quorum of the council physically present, but we have a council physically present in the room tonight. At the same time, we must provide the public with adequate alternative access to the meeting. This meeting is accessible in real time by Zoom, by phone, and as a live broadcast on Amherst Media Channel 9 and live stream. Given that we have a quorum of the council. Thank you. Given that we have a quorum of the council present, I'm calling the March 4, 2024 regular town council meeting to order at 633. For those of you that have signs, you may not block other people's views. I would suggest strongly that you move, use the walls over here or way back there. And please do not raise your signs so that you are in fact blocking other people's views. The mics are on. I wanna make sure the council knows that, that they're on at all times. This is different than when we are in the town room. So that is a change for us being here. I'm going to call on each counselor to make sure that they can hear us and we can hear them. And then we will proceed with the rest of the meeting. Patty Angelis. Present. Anna Devlin Gothier. Present. Counselor Ette. Present. Lynn Griesmer is present. Counselor Haneke. Present. Bob Hegner. Present. Counselor Lord. Present. Pam Rooney. Here. Counselor Ryan. Present. Kathy Shane. Here. Andy Steinberg. Present. Jennifer Taub. Present. Councillor Walker. Here. There is no chat room for this meeting. If you have technical issues, you need to make sure that Athena, who is the clerk of the town council, and I both know. We will make adjustments uh, if we have to and note that in the minutes. Uh, if you would like to make a comment as a counselor, you must use your raised hand function. Um, There will be a two hour general public comment period at this meeting immediately following the announcements. The order of the agenda is as it has been posted. I also wanna note that while I don't identify, we do, yes, I do. We have press in the room. Uh, just two quick announcements, actually three. On March 18th, the council will meet in its regular town meeting room at Town Hall. At that time, we will have a public forum on the appropriations outside the annual budget, specifically the Community Preservation Act project funding. We will also have a presentation and discussion of the proposed use of the remaining ARPA funds. On April 1st, the Town Council will also meet at 6.30 in the Town Room. There will be a public comment period during each of these meetings. And on, the 20, on April 1st, we will focus on the regional school budget. In a very positive note, I want to mention that we will be breaking ground for the new elementary school at the Fort River site on Tuesday, March 26th at 3.30. We have no hearings tonight. So I ask that you all bear with me while we go through a couple of procedural things with regard to public comment. Anybody wishing to make public comment who is in the auditorium, if you have not signed up, please do so with Angela Mills. She's right back here. 
If you are in Zoom and you wish to make public comment, please raise your hand at this time. Athena, how many people have signed up for public comment in the room? We have more than 50 down here and there are more signing up in the back. Okay. And at this point, there are 88 people on Zoom, 20 of whom have raised their hands. We will recognize speakers in the order in which they signed up rotating between Zoom and in person so as not to advantage or disadvantage a person who was not able to be present in the room. Our hope is to hear as many voices as possible this evening. Comments shall be on matters within the jurisdiction of the council and on our agenda and are protected by the First Amendment rights of the US Constitution. The council will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during general public comment public comments are not reflective of the opinions of the town council. We ask that you make your comments in a peaceable manner and that you respect everyone's right to make offer their public comments attending the meeting. Given the size of the crowd this evening and the fact that I know that many of you have also been rightfully participating in demonstrations, that means when someone finishes speaking, please do not make comments. Do not support, do not not support, because that takes up the time that we have for public comment. Thank you. We have two hours for public comment. This is established by the town council's rules. And the building closes at 10.30. As publicized in advance of the meeting, speakers will have a maximum of two minutes to make comments. And the, although I cannot, by rules of our procedure, restrict you to one, I ask you in light of the number of people that have signed up to make public comment, to look seriously at your comments and see if you can reduce them to one minute. One minute, I cannot require you to do so. We, observe, we will observe the limits and please note the clock up on the screen. We will recognize an individual wants to make public comment, but per our rules, you may not yield your time to another individual. When you're called, called upon, please state your name, pronouns, and where you live before beginning your comments. With that, I'm going to ask Athena to call on the first person, and then after that, we will go to Zoom. Athena is also going to try to cue other people up in the order so that, again, we save as much time as we can. Okay, We're starting public comment at 640. Athena? Mike Offner, Mike Offner, please make your way down. And then Randy Stein, Lisa Pearlbinder, you'll be next, but we're going to alternate between Zoom and in person. Thank you. So please state your name and where you live before you begin your comment. My name is, my name is Mike Hoffner. I live in Amherst. The ceasefire resolution before the council is tyranny of the majority and highly divisive. The opponents are mostly Jewish, with Jews being a tiny percentage of the Amherst population, the proponents have the larger total numbers. There are Jewish supporters of the resolution, but that is no indication of unity. As a Jewish dad who is strongly in favor of a comprehensive ceasefire and who has studied Israel and the Middle East for decades, I offered to help fact check and slightly modify the resolution to make it a statement of unity. My offer was rejected and I was attacked and insulted because I am an out because I am outspoken about Jew hatred in the town of Amherst, which makes me the wrong kind of Jew to be included 
in the group behind this resolution. Gallup polls indicate that many blacks oppose affirmative action. Clarence Thomas helped end affirmative action and Amy Coney Barrett helped end abortion rights. No one would ever cite that evidence as indicating unity for these outcomes. When a marginalized group is a tiny percentage of the population, it is easy for a bigoted majority to trample over the small number of dissenters to a resolution, and they can always find some collaborators from within the marginalized group because it feels safer to stand with a threatening mob than to oppose it. The best outcome would be unity of all council members abstaining on this resolution. I also note I have indicated to Ms. Griesmer a concern about violation of the open meeting law because there's been an amended version of the resolution circulated right before the meeting not posted 48 hours beforehand. You Those need to re you need to complete your comments immediately. Of state Time, local Michael, local thank you. Matea Kramer, please enter the room. State your, we will unmute you. Please state your name where you live and go ahead with your comments. Can you hear me? We can. My name is Mattia Kramer. Pronouns are she, her. I live in District 1. I am Jewish, and my Jewish family was shaped by anti-Semitism and remains traumatized today. Here in Amherst, Jewish residents fear anti-Semitism, and Palestinian residents fear Islamophobia. We as a town will help break the local cycle of dehumanization by voting for a ceasefire. To vote for a ceasefire is to say that we, the people of Amherst, refuse to fund the killing of civilians with our federal tax dollars. To vote for a ceasefire is to affirm that no one life is more valuable than any other. That bombing Palestinian children is no less a crime than bombing the children of Crocker Farm School. A ceasefire can never be anti-Semitic. Killing is not a Jewish value. My Jewish ed education taught me never again, meaning no genocide ever again for any people. By standing in solidarity with my Palestinian neighbors, I make the world safer for Jewish people too. Instead of pushing more trauma onto the next generation, who will then push more trauma onto the generation after them, we can say the cycle stops here. We break the cycle by speaking out for one another, starting in our own neighborhoods in Amherst. Please vote for a ceasefire. Thank you to all our counselors for your service on behalf of the people of Amherst. Zena, next person. Randy Stein, and then Lisa Perlbinder and Henia Lewin. Please go ahead. Thank you, my name is Randy Stein. I've lived in Amherst for 15 years. Um, first of all, let me say I'm very glad the members of the council are interested and willing to respond to events around the world, not just in the Middle East. Um, uh, and I also want to say I am in favor of a ceasefire, but not for the reasons that are in this resolution. Uh, I want to point out the one place that I have serious issues with, and that is the difference between the description of what happened on October 7th and what has happened since. Uh, the description in October 7th, at least the last version I've seen, simply says that lives were taken. And the description of what has happened since the bombing of Gaza mentions women and children. I want to remind everyone that women were butchered, raped, mutilated, also on October 7th, and frankly, unfortunately, many, many years before that. I lived in Israel for five years on a kibbutz that now doesn't exist anymore on the northern part of Israel, um, Kibbutz Benara. And while I was there in 78, we were bombed and I was in a bomb shelter for three weeks and several people in the kibbutz were killed. Um, I am for peace and I am for resolution and a ceasefire could be the beginning. 
But I think ultimately, if Palestinians and Israelis can find their way to create a state for each of these peoples in peace, that would be the resolution. Um, what I would could support is a resolution from this council uh, with a commitment for the safety of all the people of Amherst. And therefore, I very much appreciated the very last uh, paragraph in the resolution, and I'd love to have that highlighted. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would Ronnie Parker please be unmuted and go ahead. Ronnie, can you please unmute? Hi, this is Ronnie Parker. Are you hearing me? We can. Okay, so I'm calling really because of the numbers around the children who are dead in Gaza. More than 10,000 are dead. UNICEF estimates that more than 17,000 are wandering about. They've lost their families. These are our children. That's why I'm calling for a ceasefire. I think we have to stop this. We have to stop the shooting. We have to let aid through. We have to get them food. We have to get them medical care. This is only the children, mind you. But that's where I focus because adults are always fighting. We're always killing. But the children have nothing to do with this. They're totally dependent on us. Whatever the politics, this is not right. It's especially wrong because we are enabling it. What's the impact of Little Amherst? I really don't care. It's up to us. We need to speak out because we don't accept this. I don't believe any of us really wants to be associated with this kind of killing and damage. So I'm speaking out loud today that we do not support this unbearable violence inflicted on the people of Gaza. We need to protect the life that is left. I am appealing to you not to be divided on this. Nothing is clearer than that we must stop the killing. We must open the pathways for humanitarian assistance and we need to do it now. Thank you. Oh, pass the resolution, please. Athena, please move. Yes. Lisa right Probinder. Ahead. And then Henia Lewin will be next and John Loeb afterwards. Good evening, town council members. Good evening, fellow citizens of Amherst and good evening to those who have come to offer their support. I'll be brief. Israel's at war due to an unprovoked attack, a ceasefire broken by Hamas and has the right to defend itself as a sovereign nation. A resolution calling for a ceasefire this evening will not bring about peace. In fact, of all the signs I've seen out tonight, not a single one of them called for peace. They called for a ceasefire. In the Hamas charter, it says- Please, stop. stop. There shall be no legitimacy of the Zionist entity. Hamas believes that no part of the land of Palestine should be compromised or conceded, irrespective of the causes, the circumstances, the pressures. Hamas rejects any alternative to the full and complete liberation of Palestine from the river to the sea. Those of you who know geography can figure that one out. So there are many, many citizens being killed. I know we all want peace, I hope. But Hamas senior leader Khaled Michel stated October 19th that no nation is liberated without sacrifices. In all wars, there are some civilian victims. We are not responsible for them. You got it. Please. He also vowed to repeat October 7th attacks time and again until Israel is annihilated. Ismail Hanaya, arguably the leader of Hamas, says we will not recognize Israel. Palestine must stretch from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. Hamas official Hamad al ragheb said he prayed for the annihilation and paralysis of the Jews, who he describes as filthy animals, transform them into filthy, ugly animals, apes, pigs, because of the injustice and the evil they had brought about. Thank you. I come 
to my council for parking tickets, Thanks. not for foreign policy. Right. Thank you. Stephen Brevik, please enter the room, state your name and where you live and unmute. Thank you, go ahead. Hi, yes, my name is Stephen Brevik. I go by he, him. I'm a psychologist here at Amherst. I'm also a resident of District 2, where I live with my wife and kids. And I'm here to support the resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza. I want to offer my perspective as a psychologist because what we're witnessing in Gaza is having a significant impact on our community. Individuals are presenting to my practice, experiencing symptoms of trauma, depression, substance abuse, anxiety, related to this genocide. These symptoms have been worsened by the inaction that we've witnessed from leaders at the local and national level. We're hearing it tonight. Individuals affected are becoming disillusioned, distrusting, and disconnected from our idea of America and of our town here in Amherst. Major news outlets have been dehumanizing Palestinians on a daily basis, reducing their lives to numbers and statistics while we name and mourn those lost on October 7th. And this comes at a cost. Research informs us that this type of media coverage can cause significant distress for affected populations, a loss of faith in humanity, identity threat, marginalization, a diminished sense of belonging, powerlessness, shame, and a sense of inferiority for Palestinian and Arab populations. And it's happening here. I know it. I see it all the time. For those that think this is not a local issue, I beg to differ. I personally and professionally know individuals who think about this, talk about this, and suffer with this daily, long into the night, and it inhibits their ability to function. Unfortunately, this issue is very local. Nothing justifies genocide, and we're simply asking for it to stop. Your inaction is amplifying the suffering of our community members, so please vote yes on this resolution and prevent further harm to the people of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Stop. I'm warning you once, and if it goes twice, I'll warn again. And if we have to stop the meeting because you cannot abide by our rules, we will. Got it? Kenya Lewin. My name is Kenya Lewin. I live in Amherst. Uh, I'm a Holocaust survivor. I'm 84 years old, so I'm considered a child survivor. And uh, 1.5 million children were killed during the Holocaust. So I owe my life to my non-Jewish neighbors who took a risk and saved the Jewish child. Since October 7th, I feel again a Holocaust. And now living in Amherst, where I felt so wonderful for the last 25 years, being involved in so many community activities, I feel all of a sudden again like the unwanted Jew. I have wonderful friends from Egypt, from Turkey, and all of a sudden we are not the friends anymore because of this kind of statement. This is divisive. Let's leave the foreign policy to our president and our vice president. And I think they're doing a very good job and hopefully they will get there. But it is not our place in Little Amherst to decide foreign policy. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to go to the next person. You need to identify yourself by name, Row Food Northampton. Please unmute. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, I need to explain that I was unable to sign out of my work email. Um, I am only speaking for myself, not for my workplace, Grow Food Northampton. Please my state name, your name and where you live. My name is Elisa Klein. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and I am a resident of Northampton, but am a former resident of Amherst and still have many ties in the community. In terms of identifying myself for this evening's public comment, though, what I think is most important is that I am a proud Jew and an Israeli American. 
I grew up in Israel and I served for two mandatory years in the Israeli army when I was 18 years old. I tell you this because this evening you'll hear from a number of Jews and maybe some Israelis who will proudly self-identify as such because they think that that status gives them a kind of moral righteousness and extra clout to speak out against this ceasefire resolution. But I too am Jewish. I'm also Israeli, as I said, with beloved family members living in Israel. And I say, please vote yes and pass this resolution. You'll also hear from Jews this evening who lost ancestors in the Holocaust, as if that victim status grants them moral authority in protesting the notion of ceasefire in Gaza. I too lost almost every member of my paternal ancestry in the, in the genocide that was the Holocaust. And it's precisely because of this loss of so many family members in the Holocaust, and precisely because of what I know and what I've seen and, as an Israeli, and what I witnessed in my years in the Israeli army, that compels me today to say we need a ceasefire now, immediately in Gaza. That is the only moral stance we can take against that genocide that is being perpetrated by Israel and our U.S. tax dollars. Thank you Calling for your comment. John Loeb. And then it will be Ahmad Estefani afterwards and Rabia Ahmed. Thank you. I'm John Loeb. I live in Amherst. That better? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm John Loeb. I live in Amherst. And uh, I think there's no one in this room, and I feel really comfortable saying this, who isn't for peace and a ceasefire. And what we have to differentiate is how does that ceasefire come about, and who is the aggressor, and who and what is the ultimate goal in mind. I think it was made very clear from something that Lisa Perlbein has said that Hamas has very little interest in a ceasefire per se. And when you talk about all of the people, Jews, Muslims, anyone else who were killed, it is horrendous. All that being said, I'm confused. Where was the town council when 600,000 people were killed in Syria? 26,000 children and 16,000 women. Where was this town council as the slaughter in Yemen is taking place? Where are all of our protesters? I don't see them having protests about that. No, no. It seems like Mr. Trump has been very successful. And I imagine in this room, there aren't very many Trump supporters, maybe a few. I happen not to be a Trump supporter, but he has been successful. He has opened up the woodwork and the racists and the anti-Semites have come crawling out and they've come crawling out very, very hard. I think we need to be very careful about what we do as a town in terms of, are we going to support a resolution that is incomplete in its ultimate meaning. Do we understand history? Thank I you think not. Comment. Thank you. Um, Barry, please enter the room, state your full name and where you live. My name is Barry Roth. I live in Northampton. I used to live in Amherst. I went to UMass. Can I begin? Please. It would really help to get some facts on the record. I hear a lot of anti-Jewish Israeli propaganda being presented as truth. I asked my counselor here in Northampton who voted for our measure, if she could name three countries bordering Israel and she was unable to do so. Tragic as what is going on in Gaza and Israel, any ma measure demanding a ceasefire only serves Hamas's propaganda and indoctrination program and will ultimately ultimately result in more suffering. To speak of uh, Israel del deliberately committing genocide is, is an abomination. Uh, the population of Gaza went from 70,000 in 1948 to today, it's well over 2 million. They have the highest population growth in the world. And the world is funding, spending more money on, on providing them with things to build a good life than they are in providing money for Israel for armaments. 
what the Gazans choose and what Hamas in particular does chooses to do with that money is make missiles and indoctrinate their kids. The Gazans are a smart people. It's up to us to see to it that the truth breaks through. Stop allowing the indoctrination from the time they're little children. It's not the mistreatment. If you go, if, if the truth gets out there and you see there are more medical students, gradu Palestinian medical students graduating from Israeli colleges than there are Jewish students uh, graduating. The, this whole thing is the biggest lie ever. Joseph Goebbels said, tell a big lie long enough Everyone will believe it, maybe even yourself would. This is all total propaganda. It's tragic for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Ahmed Estahani. Please correct me if I mispronounced your name. Um, yes, my name is uh, Ahmed Estahani. Thank you. Um, I live in Greenfield. Um, from my perspective, this resolution has brought out three categories of people. The first category are people who are thinking with their heart. They see the images and they feel love and compassion for those who they identify with. Uh, justifiably, they become angry and they feel hatred towards people who they believe to be the ones hurting the people that they love. The second category of people are thinking with their heads. They're thinking this is a little bit more complicated. You know, there's a lot of moving parts. This isn't as simple as just passing resolution. There's lots of things to consider. The third category of people for people who are, hurt, who are here in spirit, and they know that there's something else going on, and they can feel it. What that is, they're not quite sure. They can feel it in their bones, and I'm one of them, that this is something that is beyond just Israel-Palestine, beyond just this present conflict. So even though I'm supportive of the ceasefire, I do not believe that it will address the needs. What needs to happen is all three people need to sit down and talk and figure out, figure out a way to find some type of peaceful resolution to this. Thank you. I am Road Walt. Please enter the room, state your name and where you live. And I'm, I'm Go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is Ian Rodewalt. I uh, live in the first district of Amherst. I'm here tonight to speak in a professional capacity, a community capacity, and a personal capacity. Uh, first, as a professional capacity, I work as a labor organizer for the Western Mass Area Labor Federation. Uh, we're a coalition of more than 60 public and private sector unions in Hampshire, Franklin, Hampton, and Berkshire counties, representing 50,000 unionized workers. Uh, in mid-November, we passed a ceasefire resolution. Uh, more recently, in February, the national AFL-CIO, representing 12.5 million union workers across the country, called for a ceasefire on February 8th. Second, I'm... Uh, a member of the Amherst Disability Access Advisory Committee. Um, and on our, in our meeting on February 13th, the Disability Advisory Committee um, unanimously voted in support of the ceasefire resolution. Israel's ongoing siege and bombardment of the Gaza Strip has been a mass disabling event. Israel has killed more than uh, 30,000 Palestinians now and injured more than 67,000 Palestinians in five months. With Israel's ongoing siege preventing medical aid from entering Gaza, surgeons, doctors, and other medical staff have to operate and perform surgeries on patients without anesthesia. Additionally, since October 7th, the World Health Organization has documented more than 350 attacks on healthcare uh, institutions in the Gaza Strip, which have included 98 healthcare facilities, including 27 out of 36 hospitals, and affected 90 ambulances, including 50, which sustained dam damage. Uh, and then finally, on a personal note, I lived in Ramallah in the West Bank for two years and taught there. Um, and I have a dear family friend who had family that was sheltering in the St. Por Porphyrius uh, Church in Gaza when Israel bombed it on October 19th, um, and a member of their family was killed. Um, and then a friend of mine sent me a video this morning of the Israeli army making- Stop, sir, thank you for your comments. Please go ahead. Rabia Ahmed. Good evening. My name is Rabia Ahmed and I'm a resident of District 2 here in Amherst. I have two children who attend Fort River and it's well overdue for you to call a ceasefire now and end the horrors in Gaza and acknowledge the humanity of brown and Muslim people as equally worthy. It is a scary time to be a Muslim in America. 
Growing up here post 9-11, I was forced to hide my identity. My family was targeted by law enforcement. My father was called a terrorist. I was told your people did this by the senior most person during my college internship. Our phones were tapped and our, the home of my college age cousins was raided by the FBI when neighbors reported them for suspicious behavior. They were never charged. Their only crime was being brown and Muslim. Since October 7th, Islamophobia has run rampant once again. Over Thanksgiving weekend, three college students speaking Arabic and English were shot while out for a walk in Burlington, Vermont. Two of them were wearing tortillas like this one. Hisham Artwani is now paralyzed from the chest down. That is 200 miles from here. In October, Wazi al Fayuma, a Palestinian boy, was fatally stabbed 26 times in his apartment by his landlord. He was six years old. I also have a six-year-old son. He was his class's love leader on Friday at Four River. As a mother, I fear for my kids. This counts love leaders, because once again, they will be targeted for being brown and Muslim. We moved to Western Massachusetts for work and chose Amherst as our home for what this community says it represents, is its commitment to social justice and human rights. And now we will see if that's actually true for just some campaign slogans. Today, you have a choice. The choice of supporting a ceasefire resolution as written, which acknowledges the humanity and suffering of the children and people of Gaza, people like me who are brown and Muslim. If you don't pass it, you will hold up the assumption that my life and the lives of my children are just less worthy. I shouldn't have to beg for our humanity. That's, thank you. In person, after this next Zoom commenter, we'll have Uri Strauss, Tom Porter, Joe Snowrege, and Leila Mushabek. Kathy Axelson Berry, please enter the room, state your name and where you live. Hi, I'm uh, Kathy or Kitty Axelson Berry, and I live in District 2. And I'm a proponent of peace and of a long ceasefire. When I was first asked to sign this resolution back in January, I told the writer that I couldn't do so because of its violent tone and focus. It's not a peace resolution. It's a condemnation of Israel more than it is a support of a ceasefire. And this is not a genocide, it's a war, and it's part of a generations long cycle of violence. I sent the writer an alternative resolution that focuses on long-term peace, but it was rejected. However, too many deaths have gone by since then. Even though this resolution is all about blame, Hamas has not given up the Israeli hostages, has not changed its messages, mission, has not changed its own appalling tactics. And I'm really of two minds, but in the end, I have to support it. Sadly, and with deep fear, because of the deeper messages it communicates, the way it encourages violence in the name of a ceasefire. Thank you. Athena, I want to pause for a moment. People who are on Zoom do not hear the people in the, um, that are speaking in the room. So I'm going to suggest that one of the counselors give their mic to them. Okay. Thank you, Anna. That's very nice. Hi, um, my name is Uri Strauss. I use he, him pronouns. I live in South Amherst. I have two children at Hawker Farm and I'm a UMass alum. Um, I'm also Jewish. I'm the grandson of four Holocaust survivors. After the war, my mother's family moved to Israel where my mother grew up. I spent time in my childhood living in Israeli settlements in West Bank. Um, and both of my siblings and their families currently live in Israel as, as much of my extended family. I've been advocating for an end to Israel's occupation of Palestine for more than 30 years. The current war is a continuation and intensification of what has always been Israel's policy of subduing and subjugating the Palestinian people. Not to end the Palestinian resistance, but to solidify it. This puts not only Palestinians, but also Israelis like my family in danger. The only way out is to stop the violence, stop the starvation, and enter into peace talks based on principles of international law and human rights. For this reason, the Council should work for the first step on that, which is the resolution in support of the ceasefire in Gaza. Recent surveys by Data for Progress and the ISPU. I've showed very strong support for a ceasefire in every U.S. demographic poll, including 
Similarly, the December 12th Israeli by the Maori newspaper found overwhelming support for a ceasefire which would include the hostage deal. Here in town, more than 120 Jews have signed a letter supporting the resolution and calling out the misguided notion that this support is in any way anti Semitic. The councillors should ask themselves do I want to stand with my community and public opinion across the country at this historic moment or stand against this? I urge the council to stand with its own Jewish community here in Amherst and support the resolution. You know, we still have static. And so, again, you can um, continue. Jacobson, please enter the room, state your name and where you Thank you. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Uh, on uh, uh, Rabbi Devor Jacobson, I'm a resident of Hadley uh, and an active member of the Jewish uh, community of Amherst. On October 16th, the town council voted unanimously to adopt a resolution condemning the October 7th savage Hamas attacks on Israel and its citizens. I was asked to consult on that document and felt privileged to be involved. Now we consider yet another resolution one that condemns the overwhelming military force ordered by the Netanyahu government that has resulted in the deaths of over 30,000 Gazans, including so many children. It demands a ceasefire, anathema for some, including many in Israel and also here in the American Jewish community. And though my intention is not to add to the divisiveness and frustration, I do feel moved to come forward and forcefully advocate now for this resolution. To say that we are facing a humanitarian crisis feels like a tragic understatement given the nightmarish scenes that we see daily. Almost an entire population displaced and facing horrific scarcity. To say nothing of living in constant fear, grief, and surrounded by death. This resolution does not attempt to offer any long-term solution to the more than a century old conflict between Israel and Palestine. But it offers what town resolutions can offer, which is to promote civic engagement on issues that matter. And more than that, it allows us in the face of undeniable human catastrophe to express our outrage, pain, and deep sense of moral urgency. It is a reminder that all human life is precious and acknowledges the suffering and trauma of both Israelis and Palestinians without demonization of the other. Finally, it is motivated by the deep conviction that the path to peace- Your time is up. Thank you. Tom Porter. Uh, good evening. I'm Tom Porter, uh, Crocker Farm graduate and uh, I live in District 5. Um, we don't do well always with dialogue in Amherst. We're pretty good at talking and not always with listening, but we're going to get a lot better. Town Council, I applaud you. You get to listen all night long. Um, thank you. You do a great job. Whatever we're paying you, it isn't enough. Um, the job of the Town Council is to make uh, life in Amherst peaceful, to make it great and beautiful and worthwhile. I think spending your time and your political capital and your civic reputations on a symbolic exogenous statement is not the council's responsibility. Uh, you passed a humanitarian resolution in October. You're under pressure now, I know. The concept of a ceasefire seems irresistible. Who isn't for peace? We all are, we all are. People laughed before at the distinction between peace and ceasefire. Uh, the word peace doesn't appear on the posters. It doesn't appear in the resolution. Tonight's propose, uh, proposed resolution only inflames the situation. Please leave it there, let it be, or be prepared to amend it month after month from now on. As a member of the Jewish community of Amherst, and I'm specifically not a spokesperson, I'm just simply a member, I'm telling you unequivocally on the record, our synagogue has not voted, has not voted to support this resolution. This resolution accomplishes uh, none of what it seems to say it, 
it's set out to do. It's a distraction. We can't afford for you to be distracted. It is not for this body to decide. Please abstain. Kathleen Anderson, please enter the room. State your name and where you live. Kathleen Anderson. I live in Amherst. I just want to say that I want to ask the council to support this resolution for a ceasefire. I am a native of Minnesota, <clears throat> where uh, one of my ancestors was uh, Im immigrant, a Jewish immigrant. I attended schools with a uh, large Jewish population. I have a, a sense of of care about the atrocity that happened uh, during the um, World War II and what the Nazis did to the Jewish population. I am sensing as the um, Jewish um, the soldier who spoke earlier that there needs to now be a ceasefire that what is happening is uh, an atrocious reenactment of what the Jewish, what feels to me like what the Jewish people experienced during the Nazi period. So let's stop this. Let's uh, start by at least advocating for a ceasefire and for peace. Thank you. Josna Rege? No, Josna Rege, she has District 1. It's bewildering to me that in a town known for speaking out early and often on international issues, that a council resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza would be at all controversial. It's similarly bewildering that anyone would suggest that it is inappropriate for our elected councillors to weigh in on an international issue, that one is not qualified to speak on the subject unless they have an advanced degree in history or political science. But a concern that goes beyond just the potholes in our roads is part of the DNA of this town. Our family has lived in Amherst since 1990 when our son was about to start kindergarten. We stayed because Amherst was diverse, tolerant and international. We wanted our son to grow up in this atmosphere. As an immigrant and a foreigner, I felt at home too. When Operation Desert Storm was launched in 1991 and military cargo planes roared overhead, our, sons, our son became anxious. His artwork featured threatening bombers looking like something out of Star Wars. We tried to reassure him, but the bombers kept coming. Then a young man, Gregory Levy, committed an act of self-immolation in protest right on the Amherst Town Common. There was an outpouring of grief. We took our son to a small peace vigil at the gates of Westover Air Force Base, where we held hands and sang, give peace a chance. This was a turning point for him. His parents were doing something about this scary situation, and he too was part of the solution. He did a new drawing, this time of grounded bombers and soldiers coming home. This story defines our town for me. Children feel safer when they know that the grown-ups are working to make things better. Active citizens make healthy communities. Speaking out for peace is a good in itself. Today, dying babies and their helpless parents have become daily spectacles on our screens. Although we are an overeducated population here in Amherst, it doesn't require Thank you for an advanced your degree to call out stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Kathy, Kathel Kearney, please enter the room. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced your name. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, hey, great, thank you. My name is Kyle Kearney, District 5. I'd like to make two points in support of this ceasefire resolution. First, this is not a politically divided question. This is simply about acknowledging that the lives of those trapped in Gaza have value, that Palestinian lives have value and worth. If we need evidence from our political and military leaders to confirm this, Vice President Harris is now calling for a ceasefire, and the US has started airdropping aid into Gaza in an acknowledgement that not enough is being done for civilians there. Any suggestion that this is a politically divisive vote is merely a distraction technique from those that don't believe Palestinian lives matter. Secondly, this is about voting yes for human rights. We are witnessing a man-made famine unfold before our very eyes. It is the most vulnerable in society that will die from this. Multiple of Gazan's basic human rights as defined by the UN have already been stripped from them. The right to food, the right to clean water, 
the right to housing, the right to education, and now, most painfully, the right to life. Too often it is easy to see numbers on our screens, thinks, oh, that's terrible, and move on with your day. But I want to put the scale of this loss into context for our community. Think of the whole population of UMass Amherst, the students, the faculty, the staff. Think of their faces, their real lives, their stories and their potential. Think of what they can contribute to engineering, science, math, literature, art, culture, finance, economics. And now imagine they are all just gone. How loud would our voices be if we were called to stand up and protect and stop that? How rapid would our resolution pass? This is your chance to give a voice to those that don't currently have one. Thank you. Next up, please. Leila Mishabek, uh, she, her, I live in District 1. I'm a Palestinian American resident and I have two kids, Sammy who's seven and Omar who's four. In October, just after the town council unanimously passed its resolution condemning Hamas, the Gazan Health Ministry released the names and ages of the 6,000 confirmed dead Palestinians, 3,000 children. I found 90 called Sammy and 115 called Omar. That's more Palestinian children killed in under a month than the total number of Israelis killed in 10 years of conflict. That number has since increased fivefold. I'd like to remind the council that there are people in this room for whom those statistics are not numbers. They are friends and family and colleagues. They share our names and our faiths and we see our children's faces in their faces and they are being starved and killed with our tax dollars. For some of us, our awareness of Palestinian suffering did not begin in October, but has characterized a generational trauma that runs through our families. Our people are called human animals by leaders as they are intentionally de deprived of the most basic human needs. And this dehumanization is dismissed by members of our council as not a local issue. We have watched as mothers write their children's names on their limbs so they can be identified. We have watched as men, women, and children are round up, blindfolded, and held in military detention without charge under conditions that constitute torture. And our leaders veto permanent ceasefire resolutions in the Security Council in order to safeguard temporary ones. This resolution falls far short of acknowledging the injustice my people have faced. It simply offers a basic truth that human rights are for everyone equally and that these rights can never be conditional. Failing to pass this resolution as written would make an official town statement that Palestinians are less deserving of these rights. Our community has come together around this resolution in massive numbers. I have seen awareness grow and I can tell you that people are connecting the dots of collective liberation and we are paying attention. Thank you for your comments. The next, Stop. The next in person speakers will be Vincent O'Connor, Jill Brevik, Julian Ramirez and Jim Oldham. After we take Zoom folks. Rachel Bond, please enter the room, state your name and where you live. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, hold on. Hi, my name is Rachel Bond. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am an Amherst resident. Um, as a Jew in this community, I feel deeply saddened by this conflict and complicit um, in the amount of uh, oh, irreversible pain other Jews have caused to innocent lives. There are individuals who want us to believe that advocating for a ceasefire is somehow anti-Semitic and it's dangerous or offensive for American and Israeli Jews. Many people, especially Jews, are afraid to take a stance because of the possibility of repercussions for their jobs and livelihood. A ceasefire statement by Amherst City Council would be very powerful, not in spite of its Jewish community, but because of it. I'm also a new parent of an eight month old girl since October 7th, as mentioned previously, Israeli attacks have killed at least 10,000 children. Thousands more are missing. This level of extreme violence enacts, uh, enacts upon the Gaza Strip in the months since the attack has been sustained by direct American support. A ceasefire is important because violence out of fear leads to more violence down the road. A ceasefire would allow for aid to be delivered, for captives on both sides to be released, and could help build a road towards political solutions. The process of local government taking an international stance on acts of violence, as this very committee did, 
after the attacks on October 7th, 7th can send a powerful message about our collective values towards peace and diplomacy. Speaking as both a parent and a Jew, I urge you to back a ceasefire resolution in Amherst. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Vincent O'Connor. Why are we discussing this resolution about this war? Because like Vietnam, it is on our radios and televisions every day, unlike the conflicts in Syria, Sudan, and Congo. And its images are affecting the lives of most, if not all of us. I support this ceasefire resolution. But what can or should we do tomorrow? First, I believe we should activate an Amherst Refugee and Asylum Applicant Commission to welcome all refugees and asylum seekers, including Palestinians and Jews fleeing this conflict or seeking medical care in the United States. Second, tomorrow, President Biden needs to hear at the ballot box from those of us who consider his leadership on a failure on this conflict. Jerry Levinsky, please enter the room and unmute. Thank you, members of the council. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, my name is Jerry Levinsky. I live on Halleck Street. Uh, and have spent the better part of 45 years living in Amherst. Uh, I've raised my son, uh, Josh, uh, who has uh, lived here all of his life as well. Uh, I grew up in Springfield, and Amherst was always uh, a place that I desired to be uh, because of the fact, among other reasons, that Amherst has a long history, as has been noted by other speakers of standing honorably and publicly in this region and across the country on important, vital issues of domestic and international importance. I grew up in a Jewish home. I went to Hebrew school. I was bar mitzvahed in an Orthodox traditional uh, synagogue. And my father lost most of his family uh, in the Holocaust. I say that uh, to uh, support those who have made the case, made the point uh, that any insinuation that those who are uh, arguing against this resolution are somehow anti-Semitic uh, are either misguided or uh, seem to not understand fully what's at stake here. Uh, we have a situation uh, in which a majority of the people in this country want a ceasefire. Uh, and we have an administration that refuses to abide by the interests of the American people. It's important that this council make clear publicly that the Biden administration must move towards an immediate ceasefire. The Israeli government is committing genocide against Palestinians in Gaza. They have already killed tens of thousands of people in a matter of months. It reduced entire neighborhoods to rubble. Thank you for your comments. Hundreds of attacks on hospitals. Sir, we're finished. Thank you. Jill Brevik. My name is Jill Brevik, District 2, she, her. I'm urging you to vote yes on the resolution in support of a ceasefire and not abstain as an abstention is a no vote. I've seen the organizing group for this resolution conduct a thoughtful process drafting a resolution including diverse perspectives, securing more than 700 individual resident signatures, supporting affinity groups to relate their expertise using data. We've helped individuals safely share their experiences while dealing with the deep harm they've endured during this process. All the while facing arguments that this is not a local issue worthy of the council's time. Beyond the privilege inherent in that statement, beyond the insensitivity to those mourning loved ones killed in Gaza, the insensitivity to all the affected individuals that you've heard over and over, I'll focus on the fact that we chose you based on your promises verbatim 
to shape your agenda around the issues important to residents, encourage active engagement, and promote inclusion, safety, and justice. We looked at your voting records on global, other global resolutions, and who would imagine when we voted that any of you would claim that this isn't what you were elected to do? Abstaining all of a sudden against the status quo sends one loud message. The victims of this crisis are less important to you, less human, less worthy of unconditional basic human rights. An overwhelming number of residents will see this for the discrimination that it is, and we will vote accordingly. Now we ask you to listen to the voices that we have raised. This resolution supporters are Palestinian, Arab, Muslim, the broader BIPOC community, Jewish, LGBTQ, immigrants, survivors of interpersonal violence, myself included, and descendants of survivors of other genocides and global atrocities. Many of us with related experiences of marginalization, hate, and violence did not have to come around on this. If you're working on coming around, please remember that these are the residents you were elected to protect and respect, and I urge you to be self-reflective, amplify our Thank message, and do comments. not abstain. Thank you. Quiet. Got that? Okay. Uh, Shalini Balmil, please come in the room and unmute. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Shalini Balmil, she, her, District 5. So I'm here in support of a resolution that clearly expresses the intentions and values of the Amherst community regarding the ongoing conflict. The resolution is a statement of our collective intention. So I hope the council and the community members come together to adopt a doc document that expresses our collective values and intentions for peace, justice, and safety for all involved. It may seem that the resolution before us is a simple ask for ceasefire, a black and white situation that would end the suffering of Palestinian civilians, but as we all know, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has a long and complex history, and there's immense suffering for people as shared by many today here. These are not numbers. These are actual people who have friends, family, and and as a community, we can come together to focus on what we agree about. So that's what I want to emphasize is, and that's what I'm hearing actually, despite the differences, is that we do all agree on the condemn condemnation of all civilian casualties on, the, on supporting unhindered humanitarian aid delivery, unconditional release of all civilian hostages, safety and protection for Isra Israelis against future attacks, a long-term peace settlement, ensuring lasting safety and security for both Palestinians and Israelis, uh, urging the government to review its role in the region to based on human rights principles. So here are so many things that we do agree upon. What we can and must do, I do believe that by coming together and sending a message to the state, national, and international community that we want to see the end of conflict and address the root causes so that Israelis and Palestinians can live freely and safely. Right now, the resolution seems a little imbalanced, which I would encourage you to edit so it can say something that Israeli. Shalini, thank you for your comments. Defend and Palestinian. Julian Ramirez. Julian Ramirez, he, him. I'm a Colombian resident of Amherst. I grew up in this country as an undocumented immigrant, and I understand what it feels like to be overlooked and to be vilified by those in power. 30,000 Palestinians have been killed. Gaza is close to starvation and our tax dollars are being used to aid in genocide. Many members of this community are angry, we're pissed and we're scared. That makes this a local issue. This mild resolution is a baseline. We should be doing everything we can to resist this kind of dehumanization that asks us to overlook basic human rights for anyone. You passed a resolution supporting the people of Ukraine, passed a resolution to support the people of Palestine. None of us want to stand here and audition for your support. The fact that this is even up for discussion exposes a racism that undermines what this town claims to stand for. You declare the importance of inclusivity and equity in your campaign statements. Pass this resolution and show people like us that our lives matter and our safety is important to this town. Pass this resolution as it is, as it has been endorsed
by hundreds of members of this community and live up to your own Human Rights Day proclamation, which says that each one of us everywhere and at all times is entitled to the full range of human rights and that it is every person's responsibility to uphold them. They bind us together as a global community. Thank you for your time. That's enough, thank you. And please, now. Stephen Linhart, please enter the room, state your name and where you live. You need to unmute. Can you hear me? We can. Um, Stephen Linhart, he, him, Amherst resident for 42 years, grew up Jewish in New York. Um, I'm um, speaking in favor of the ceasefire. It, the idea that criticizing the current Israeli government is anti-Semitic has always struck me as shocking and disturbing. The current Israeli government, um, the National Security Secretary got famous by talking on television about his goal of assassinating the Israeli Prime Minister. The government uh, of the Likud ministers is famous for supporting hate crimes against Jews in France through the French National Front. This is not a question of the Israeli government is summing how having the high ground on anti-Semitism. This is a, a government that cut off food, water, electricity, and medicine, which serves absolutely no military purpose, does not help recover hostages. The bombing kills more hostages than it saves. A ceasefire would probably save more hostages than anything else. Um, so I just want to speak in favor of, of the ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you for your comment, Athena. Jim Oldham. And then Hind Mari, and then Lily Israel, and Tom Roper. Jim, that blocks people's views. Just put it down. Oh, well, Thank you. I'm, I'm Jim Oldham. I'm a resident of Amherst. I'm here in support of the resolution. And I'm here to add my name to saying that Palestinian lives matter. On October 16th, this body passed a resolution unanimously that made clear on behalf of all of us in Amherst that Israeli lives matter. For five months since then, we've watched as people have been bombed, children and their parents have been killed and buried under rubble, that the weapons paid for by our government, our taxes has been used to murder 30,000 people, to displace practically the entire 2 million population of Gaza. And as things stand now, the imbalance of our American policy that speaks out about human rights when it suits us and ignores human rights when it doesn't is shown at the local level where we have a resolution that's been passed on behalf of all of us speaking out about Israeli lives, but we haven't said that Palestinian lives matter. This resolution would, would balance that. There have been suggestions that it's inappropriate, whereas the other resolution was done without public involvement or, or without the need for public demand. You did it on your own. I'll say the other thing I'm here to say is silence is complicity. A no vote, an abstention, an amendment to change the meaning of this, any of that is complicity in those deaths that are continuing today and will continue tomorrow. We need to tell our government to stop and we need to, at the local level, raise our voices as a community. You did it for Israel, please do it for the past. Day. Thank you. Uh, Jer uh, Jeff and Marilyn Blaustein, Please unmute. You need to unmute. All 
Are you able to unmute? Um, Lynn, let's, let's come back to them. I think you've skipped Jerry Levinsky, who is in line first. Can we go to him first? Yes. Thank you. Jerry Levinsky. I, I oh, already get, I already I'm sorry. One. Thank you. Um, I thought I had. Um, so I'm going to go on to Ashwin Ravakumar. And I apologize if I have not pronounced your name correctly. Please correct me. Thank you. Yes, hello, can you hear me? We can. Great, hello, my name is Ashwin Ravi Kumar and I live in District 2 and I also teach at Amherst College. Uh, at this point, a permanent ceasefire is the bare minimum step to lasting justice in Palestine, Israel. As someone concerned with how we as a community re relate to the rest of humanity, it is deeply important to me that my community stand on the right side of history. Uh, the unthinkable human toll in Gaza 30,000 lives lost, 2 million people displaced, uh, people's connections to place severed uh, is extremely upsetting and disturbing. And it's what has brought so many of us out here today. To build a world in which we can all thrive, we must listen to our Palestinian community members, to Jewish voices for peace saying in full voice, not in our name in the face of genocide, and to the international community who has been absolutely clear on this issue. I just want to say that we cannot have a peaceful community here in Amherst where everyone's lives matter without advocating for a ceasefire, the bare minimum step that we have massive international consensus about to pursue anything that looks like justice. We can't have justice without a ceasefire. Thinking forward also to the difficult challenges that climate change, that geopolitical instability, that a changing world imply for us, we need to come together to develop a muscle memory as a community for opening our hearts to the plight of those on the other side of the world and recognizing our shared humanity that all of our fates are intertwined. Please vote yes on this resolution, joining the great tradition of municipal actions for justice that have been part of what we do for a really long time, from South Africa and the fight to end apartheid there, uh, to the war in Iraq, which we now uniformly recognize as a grave injustice. Amherst has, as a municipality, stood on the right side of history before. Let's do that again, and let's make sure that we're building the type of community where everyone can thrive. Thank you. Please go ahead. Hi, Mari, please go ahead. Hi, my name is Hind Mari, a Palestinian American and MS resident since 87. Today, I urge you to do the right thing and vote yes on the proposed ceasefire for Gaza. On October 16th, this town council passed a unanimous resolution condemning Hamas for their attack on Israel, yet failed to condemn Israel's bombardment of Gaza. Despite you stating, and I quote, we support equal measures for justice of justice and freedom for Israelis and Palestinians alike. At the time of the resolution passing, Israel had already killed 2,800 innocent civilians in Palestine. Gaza has been under a brutal blockade for 17 years before October 7th. During that time, Israel had systematically bombed Gaza in 2008-9, 2012, 2014, 18, and 2021. Over the last five months alone, Israel has killed over 35,000 Palestinians. 70% of those are women and children, leaving 70,000 who are uh, injured and displacing about 2.1 million Palestinians in Gaza who have been 80% of them refugees on their own land. Israel had carried out one of the most vicious indiscriminate um, military campaigns against civilians and only because of the support of our government and our tax money. I ask you, if 1,200 lives mattered, don't 35,000, doesn't my life as a Palestinian and other Palestinian Thank lives matter? Thank you for matter? your comment. Please affirm life and vote yes. Thank you. Bye. Stop. Cut it out. I'm warning you. 
Lynn Pesco Yang, please enter the room. Hello, can you hear me? I can, thank okay. you. Lynn Pesco Yang, she, they, District 1. I'm Jewish and I support this resolution. The idea that my opinion as a diaspora Jew is at all relevant to whether families in Gaza should starve is deeply offensive, but I mention it anyway because I know how this country works. It is thanks to an exhaustive 60-year propaganda campaign that crushed dissent from diaspora Jews like me and many in this room that there now exists a contingent of the world population who believes Jewish safety depends on Israel. The logical conclusion being that calls for Palestinian freedom, such as today's resolution, must be anti-Semitic. It is to these people I want to speak today. The idea that Jews cannot survive without committing genocide is absurd, but it is also crucially anti-Semitic. The assertion that Jewishness, a 3,000-year-old state of being that has itself survived countless attempts at genocide, depends on making martyrs and refugees of others is not just false, it is blood libel. Jewish safety simply does not depend on the genocide of other groups. To believe Jews can only survive on stolen land is to buy into the propaganda of European and American anti-Semites of the 20th century, the same propaganda that allowed the US government to turn away Anne Frank's family among thousands of other would-be refugees of the Holocaust. To my cousins in this room who still believe that their safety as Jews requires them to silence the grief and self-determination of Palestinians, I ask, is it worth it? Is the safety you feel you receive from the occupation of Palestine worth tying your love of your faith, your love of God, to the suffering of innocent people? Is your identification with a military government abroad worth the perversion of Judaism into a doctrine of genocide? And I am sad and sorry for those of you who would say yes because your Jewishness is something I no longer recognize. Please support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. I have to ask that you not do that. Thank you. Lily Israel is next, and then Tom Roper, Nechama Leaf, Ethan Markham, and Gary Tartikoff. Lily Israel, please. Hi, my name is Lily Israel. Um, I'm a resident of Amherst District 1. I've lived in Amherst for 14 years, um, and I'm also a small business owner in the area. I own an organic farm in Sunderland. Um, and I'm here today to speak in support <clears throat> in support of a ceasefire resolution. Um, I'm Jewish. My grandfather was a Holocaust survivor, the only survivor in his family. Um, and he did, uh, part of his survival was escaping to Palestine. Um, but his survival and our family's intergenerational trauma that has resulted from that event should not be the cause of violence for others. It does not keep us safe. Um, it does not keep us safe to perpetuate the same kind of harms that were done to us, to others. Um, and so I, I ask that you please vote in support of a resolution. I also wanna point out that some other speakers here have said that um, this ceasefire resolution does not contain the word peace. Um, and maybe they didn't read it, but it says, reaffirm our commitment to the safety of all members of our community and pledge to join with others seeking just and peaceful solutions. So the word peace is in there. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. We're moving on to Michelle Miller. Please enter the room. Please unmute. All right. We can hear I'm you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, counselors. My name is Michelle Miller. I use she, her pronouns, and I live in District 1. As someone who has been in your seat, I understand how difficult it can be to make decisions that are as important as this one is. Thank you for spending your time, energy, and emotions on behalf of our community. In my time on the council, I initiated and helped to write both the Ukraine and Hamas resolutions. And while I agree there is no harm in the council discussing how it would like to handle issues like this in the future, I believe that taking positions about global issues that impact human lives matters. The challenge from my perspective with counselors considering issues like this is the possibility for cognitive dissonance to play a role in the decision. In an attempt to ease the discomfort of taking a stand, we might conclude certain things like that it is inappropriate, a waste of time, or worse, totally inconsequential to waste or to, to weigh in on issues like this one. And perhaps there's an argument to be one that one of all or all of those things is true. 
There is no foolproof way to guarantee that the decision tonight will influence outcomes in Gaza. So before you vote, I ask you to consider this question. If the council's decision on this resolution tonight guaranteed an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza, the release of all hostages and the removal of obstacles to humanitarian aid, what would you decide? If the power was solely in your hands to wake up tomorrow morning to these circumstances, how would you vote? Thank you. Next, Tom Roper. Tom Roper, uh, he, him, her. I live, been living in Amherst for 50 years, raised my children here. And I would like to speak in behalf of supporting this resolution. And also to underline it first to all of the eloquent voices we have heard talking about the uh, suffering that people experience in Palestine and those people all, and other people experience in Amherst. I'd like to shed a different light on all of these things. Um, my family is all refugees and several of them died in concentration camps. I went to Theresienstadt and stood in the place where a relative of mine died. Um, but what we have to do is achieve peace. And something that people don't quite realize is that enemies are always in contact with each other. They're always negotiating with each other and we need to build on it. Let me tell you the story of my great uncle, Kurt Bondi, who was a professor in Germany in Göttingen, was fired in 1933 with all the rest of the professors there. And uh, there's a plaque to him and other people in Göttingen now. Um, he, was then, uh, he was then asked by the uh, by the Nazis and the Zionists who were working together, Nazis and Zionists were working together to help Jewish kids get out of the country uh, of Germany. At that time, he, he started a school called Großbresen. The uh, people who were at it are still in contact with each other. Um, and uh, they were heading, to, they wanted to come to the United States. Then all of a sudden, I guess the Nazis changed their tune and they took him and 25 of his students to Buchenwald and you can imagine what the end of this story was, only it was different than that. Most people who went to would just died there, right? However, a, Briti a Virginia a businessman named Talanon uh, went to the State Department and asked them to help. The State Department then negotiated with the Nazis and got all of them out of Buchenwald, including my great uncle, and they came to the United States and had prosperous lives here. Interesting case, in my opinion, of cooperation between people who were real enemies. Now, I thank you for your comment. I'm sorry, I let that go. Okay. Thank you. I was distracted. Uh, Chrysenia Bengora, please enter the room, state your name, because I know I mispronounced it. All right. Hi, my name is Chrisanya, and I'm a student at UMass Amherst, um, and I'm asking you to support the resolution for a ceasefire. Too many people in both Israel and Palestine have already died in this conflict, and Palestinian civilians, many of them children, are being killed, and we cannot let this keep happening. We need an end to this war, and what it comes down to is that we, as a community, need to take a stance. We need to take a stance against the murder of innocent people. As elected officials, that is your responsibility to speak out against this injustice. And that is why I'm asking you to vote yes on a resolution for a ceasefire. Um, thank you, and I cede the rest of my time. Thank you. Nechama Leaf. And then we'll take Ethan Markham and Gary Tartikoff. Great, hello, my name is Nechama Leaf. Um, I'm a District One resident. I've lived in Amherst for the past 12 years. I've worked for Amherst High School, did my student teaching master's internship at Amherst Middle School, and have even worked for the town council, which is just to say, uh, my investment in the town of Amherst isn't new or unique to this issue. I also am a community organizer for several groups of Jews that are non-Zionist. It's a core tenant of our spiritual practice, and I represent hundreds of people of the views that I have. Jews in the United States have been subject to a decades-long pro-Israeli propaganda campaign designed to play on our realistic fears of anti-Jewish violence in order to convince us that the state of Israel is the only solution that keeps Jews safe. To the Jews in this room whose fear for Jewish safety, safety has perhaps led you to oppose the ceasefire measure, I ask you to hear me. 
I agree that anti-Semitism is frightening and I have the same trauma in my body. And I know that our ancestors have lived through the same pogroms and genocides, but you have turned down the wrong path on this issue. The strong messaging that we have received in our lives that we were taught about Israel is not true. Israel does not make Jews in diaspora safe. It does not make Jews in Israel safe. And the genocide of Palestinians doesn't make you or me or anyone safe. And there is no amount of genocide that would be worth your safety. Around the world, calls for a ceasefire are growing louder and more clear within the halls of the UN, nationwide governments, and individuals of conscience. In the months and decades to come, when we are asked in Amherst what we did, I hope that I can say that at the minimum, my town councilors represented my voice. And along with myself, fellow Jews and non-Jews, we had a clear conscience for ceasefire now. My Jewish religion teaches me that every human life is an entire universe of immeasurable value. And as people die in Palestine continuously in horrific and inhumane ways under conditions that are unequivocally a genocide, I call upon Thank my you. elected council to represent my voice, ceasefire now. Jeff Lee, please enter the room. Hello, it's actually Carol Gray, 815 Southeast Street. Uh, I have a PhD in political science. I'm an attorney and I have a diploma in international human rights law from American University in Cairo. And I would say at the outset, I was also a town meeting member for about a decade. And I was very proud that our town took a stand on political issues. We uh, urged, Town meeting passed a resolution to urge the end of the Iraq war, to urge diplomacy instead of war in Iran, and to condemn the human rights atrocities in Darfur. I would hate to think that because we switched our form of government, we as residents of Amherst are no longer able to take political positions when it matters most. This is really about being on the right side of history. Israel and Hamas have committed war crimes. Uh, we need to look at actions based on what they are and whether they violate the law, not by who's doing them. When Hamas took hostages, that violated Article, Article 34 of the Geneva Convention. When Israel and Hamas collectively punish people when there have been mass killings, 30,000 now of civilians, that violates Article 33 of the Geneva Convention. When Israel had leaflets urging people to leave the north to go to the south only to have more bombs in the south, that's mass forcible transfers. That violates Article 49 of the Geneva Convention. Article 18 prohibits the attacks on hospitals. Uh, the Genocide Convention imposes a duty on all signatories, including the United States, to prevent and punish genocide. The U.S. is funding Israel, as you know, and uh, this really is about... Uh, Looking at the actions themselves, what if Hamas were doing these killings and had killed 30,000? Would you still hesitate? What if you just switched the parties here? And if you wouldn't hesitate for a second, then you shouldn't hesitate now. We need to be on the right side of history. All of us as residents have a right to have our town on the right side of history. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Ethan Markham. Ethan Markham, he, him, Amherst resident. I'll be reading a letter signed by more than 100 Jewish Amherst residents. As Jewish residents of Amherst, we urge the town council to vote in favor of the resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza. We believe it is crucial to uplift Palestinian voices and we share our perspective and solidarity with our Palestinian, Muslim and Arab American neighbors who are impacted most acutely. As members of a people that have survived genocide and mass pogroms, we oppose attacking or mistreating innocent civilians of any faith, nationality, or ethnicity. Among us are descendants of Holocaust survivors and people with family members currently living in the region. We call for an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza, an end to the Israeli military siege of the Gaza Strip, the release of the hostages and detainees on both sides, the removal of obstacles to urgently needed humanitarian aid entering Gaza and an end to unconditional US military aid to the Israeli government. We reject the notion that the bombardment and annihilation of Gaza is in the name of Jewish safety. We know that a ceasefire will make everyone safer. We firmly believe the idea, we firmly reject the idea that calling for a ceasefire is anti-Semitic or fuels anti-Semitism. On the contrary, the resolution is community led and supported by a broad cross section of our town. The 700 plus community sponsors include Jewish, Christian, and Muslim faith leaders, 
people across political backgrounds and community sponsors of the previous council resolutions passed in support of Ukraine and after the Hamas attacks. We insist with Jews around the world that opposition to the Israeli government's violence enabled by the United States is not anti-Semitic. In fact, equating this opposition with anti-Semitism dilutes the reality of anti-Semitism. We join many other fellow Jewish Amherst residents in calling for the council to vote yes. Many Jews here, unlike the Jewish Federation of Western Mass, support a ceasefire. Also, the council shouldn't allow out-of-town groups to silence local voices. We view our support of the resolution as deeply embedded in Jewish values, and we believe that having a civil debate and a vote on this measure, rather than questioning, di quashing dialogue, will make Amherst a healthier place Thank to live. Thank you for your comments. And make sure that if you did not get to submit everything, that you use the uh, general public comment feature as well, as many of you have done. Thank you. Athena? Oh, I'm sorry. Marisol Pierce Boniface, please enter the room. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? We can. Good evening, everyone. My name is Marisol Pierce Boniface, and I'm a junior at Amherst Regional High School, an activist and a member of Sunrise Amherst. I have met with numerous town councilors with fellow youth activists, including Mar, who will speak, and I have ducked out of classes, conducted meetings in history department offices, and we have poured our hearts out and our voices and our time for this cause. I'm currently in tech week for my high school's musical, hiding out in a corner because of the crucial nature of this resolution and testimony. As someone who identifies as ethnically Jewish, this polarization and genocide breaks my heart. There's quite a lot of misinformation regarding Jewish people and their feelings surrounding Gaza. And while I absolutely cannot speak for all Jewish communities, many Jewish communities and organizations oppose the utter genocide in Gaza and condemn the Israeli government. Many condemn the utter violence and quite frankly, genocide. Many counselors I've talked to are apprehensive of the word genocide, such a strong, extreme term. The reality is the situation in Gaza is strong, it is extreme, and it is heartbreaking. My whole family and I grieve the utter loss and destruction of Palestinian families and communities. I implore you to stand with justice, to stand with due process, and condemn the Israeli government just as we've condemned Hamas. Please vote yes on the ceasefire resolution tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Gary Tartikoff. And then we'll take Merritt Gubriam, Art Keen, and Shel Reinertsen. I am Gary Michael Tartikoff, a Ukrainian Jew with close relatives living in Jerusalem. In his novel, FEMA, the Israeli author, Amos Oz, has his title character ask, can a worthless man like me have sunk so low as to make a distinction between the intolerable killing of children and the not so intolerable killing of children? The question, of course, is ordered is uttered in a novel, but since it is our nation that is supplying the weapons doing most of the killing in Gaza today, must we not ask that question of ourselves? Have we sunk so low as to make a distinction between the intolerable killing of Israelis and the not so intolerable killing of Palestinians? Prime Minister Netanyahu speaks of an Israeli war on Hamas, but since the Israeli army cannot or will not tell the difference between Hamas and men identifying themselves as Jews speaking in Hebrew and carrying a white flag, there's no more safety for the Israeli from the Israeli forces on the ground than there is from the aerial bombardment of the civilian population. A bombardment, they say, is aimed at men in tunnels beneath hospitals a target invulnerable to aerial bombardment. By the latest reports I can find, there have been three times as many civilian deaths and casualties in the Israeli attack on the people of Gaza than in the Russian attack on the Ukraine. More Palestinian children murdered than all the deaths of Ukrainian civil civilians. The American government supplying Israel with over $3 billion a year in military hardware is now clearly the major obstacle to the government of Israel negotiating with Palestinians. Thank you for, their for your political independence comments. and protection from Israel. Thank you. Thank you. Deborah R., please enter the room, state your full name and where you live. 
Uh, hi, yeah, my name's Deborah Rosenstein. Uh, I live in South Deerfield. Can you hear me okay? We can. Okay, great, thanks. I'm a graduate of um, the master's program, a master's program at UMass Amherst and have long connections to Amherst. Um, I was not planning on speaking tonight, but um, upon <laughs> hearing um, so much of what's been going on, I just wanted to share a few things and with a lot of appreciation for everyone who's already mentioned the weaponization of anti-Semitism. I'm Jewish all the way back on both sides of my family. Um, I'm urging you to vote in favor of this resolution. The reason I wanted to speak is that ever since um, I was very small, like a lot of other Jewish people probably at this meeting, um, I learned about the Holocaust and I learned about people in my own family. And my questions were never about the Nazis or about Hitler. My questions were always about who the onlookers were, who the everyday people were during that genocide. I wanted to understand that. And in this moment, I, I wanna really second the person who was suggesting and asking you all to please not abstain on this vote. I want you to all think about yourselves in that role. That's the role that we're all in right now with this genocide. And to think about who you want to be in the company of. Do you want to be in the company of South Africa, who has lived through apartheid and knows better than any of us what the definition of that is? And the other thing I wanted to say is to just bring into mind here um, what we're facing in terms of rising authoritarianism in this country and globally. Netanyahu is the Trump of Israel. We need to put a stop to these things because it's coming home to roost for us as well. And I ask you all to do the right thing. Permanent ceasefire now. Thank you. Thank you. Merrick Gubriam. My name is Marit Gubriam and I'm a sophomore at Amherst Regional High School. I live in Belchertown, however, I have been going to the school district since first grade. In 2021, I was in the car with my jiddo, my grandpa, listening to the news, horrified to hear about the violence against Palestinians perpetrated by the state of Israel. His explanation of historical persecution urged critical thinking and condemnation. These sentiments of shock and horror have intensified, leaving me baffled at the justification of such genocide or the ability to witness it without profound anguish. Being part Lebanese, the topic of Palestinian oppression, struggle and liberation was no stranger to my household. Growing up, I often overheard conversations between my mother and grandparents about it. And again, I remember the feeling of utter shock and horror when I listened about how Palestinian life, land and culture were under attack. Learning more and more about this genocide is an increasingly strange feeling. Having to explain to people why innocent Palestinian men, women, and children should not be getting bombed, starved, and tortured. It's a very gut-wrenching feeling knowing that there are people that think the genocide of Palestinians is good and that the settler colonial state of Israel should not only continue what they've been doing, but also leave Israel without the proper accountability for their utterly deplorable actions. Finally, it is exhausting and disappointing seeing officials not do or say anything about it and go on funding this genocide. Empathy for Palestinian loss runs deep and I'm unable to fathom the heartbreak of seeing their land destroyed. To be silent is to be complicit. We cannot keep sitting and watching this cost of inaction. Please, I implore all of you to vote yes on the ceasefire resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Mohammed Sul Suleiman. Please correct the pronunciation of your name. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Mohammed Suleiman, uh, ladies and gentlemen of Amherst, Massachusetts Council. I'm a resident of this town. I urge you to consider the critical importance of advocating for a ceasefire in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, not just as a policy stance, but as a moral imperative. A ceasefire stands as the foundation towards peace, a beacon of hope to for countless lives in, insured, insured in the violence. The October 7th uh, events underscores a long history of suffering, a cycle of perpetuated, by, perpetuated by decades of conflict and oppression, our commitment to learning from history, from the inedible scars of the Holocaust teaches us the dire consequences of inaction in the face of injustice. 
the tragedy that is occurring against the Palestinians and even the tragedy against the innocent lives lost on October 7th is a result of that silence. At this moment, children in the conflict zone are starving, they are dying. The question that arises, <clears throat> the question then arises, how can you vote against a ceasefire even when, when the, how can a vote against the ceasefire can even be considered? Silence and inaction in this context equates to complicity in a humanitarian crisis of unimaginable scale. A ceasefire is not merely a political maneuver, it is an urgent humanitarian necessity to save innocent lives and provide immediate relief to those in dire situations. I, I seize the rest of my time. Thank, Thank you. you. Art Keen. Art Keen, District 3, he, him. The resolution in front of you calling for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza is co-sponsored by over 1,000 Amherst residents. Among them are Palestinians, Israelis, American Muslims, American Jews, and people embracing a wide variety of other identities. The intersectionality of the sponsors and their commitment to bridge different understandings, experiences, and histories in the service of peace offers us an analogy for the kind of compassionate cooperation that is needed in Israel and Palestine. The framers of this very moderate resolution have taken great pains to strip away recriminations in recounting a long history of past harms and grievances to bring forward a focused call to end the burgeoning tragedy in Gaza. The language has been chosen with care to highlight the urgency of the situation and to underscore that repairing all of the past violence that plagues the region can only commence after the killing stops. The resolution calls for four things, stop the killing, end the siege of Gaza, release all hostages, and release all humanitarian aid to end the growing famine. The British Medical Journal reports that we can expect an additional 86,000 Gazan deaths over the next six months as a consequence of starvation and lack of access to clean water, sanitation, and medical supplies and services. That prediction is reduced to less than 12,000 excess deaths with an immediate ceasefire. There are 7 million Jews and 7 million Palestinians living in this troubled land. And the aspirations of one side to eliminate the other are delusional. It will either be endless killing and suffering and insecurity or coexistence. The path to peace begins with a ceasefire. I call on our town council to speak up in support of peace and humanity and endorse the resolution for the ceasefire that is in front of you. Thank you. Caden Moore, please enter the room. Please unmute and go Hi. ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. My name is Caden Moore. I've been a resident of District 1 since 2020. I am speaking tonight in support of the ceasefire resolution. Equating a critique of the unconditional military support for Israel with anti-Semitism is a false narrative that abdicates our moral duty to make sure everywhere is safe for Jewish people, not just Israel. We as a community are responsible for the belonging of our Jewish neighbors, and that is not a responsibility we can outsource by funding Israel's military. We are also responsible for acknowledging the fear and pain of both our Jewish and Muslim neighbors. We can acknowledge that the actions of Hamas were violent and caused suffering, as the town council has in its previous resolution condemning the attacks of October 7th, and that Netanyahu's response has only caused more violence and suffering with an unconscionable number of Palestinian men, women, and children killed. I want all Israeli hostages freed, and I want Palestinians to live in peace. These are not mutually exclusive goals. A ceasefire is the minimum first step in working towards both. To those that have said it is not the job of the council to endorse policy, I would point to the fact that Amherst has been a progressive leader on resolutions condemning apartheid in South Africa, as well as the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Those positions were contentious at the time, but they are now regarded as the right and wise view. History has not looked kindly upon public officials looking the other way in times of moral crisis. I urge the council to adopt the ceasefire resolution as writ written and join other cities in sending a clear message to state and federal officials that we stand for life, not death and destruction. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Athena. Next is Shell Reinertsen and John Jessup. 
Hi, my name is Shell Reynardson, and I live in Amherst, District 1. I'm here today to urge you to pass the resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza. As others have said, more than 30,000 Gazans have been killed since October, and nearly 2 million have been displaced from their homes. Mass destruction is being wrought on the people of Gaza by the Israeli military, and this is heavily funded by the U.S. government. The U.S. has sent billions of dollars to the Israeli government to fund this mass killing of Palestinians. The tax dollars of Amos residents alone contribute over $250,000 every year to this funding. I am not okay with funding the deaths of tens of thousands of people, and I am not okay with our town being complicit in the deaths of tens of thousands of people. A ceasefire resolution in our town will be a powerful tool to put pressure on our state and national government to stop funding the Israeli military's siege on Gaza and to work for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. As a town, we have the opportunity to stand for justice and make a call for peace. And that is why I urge you to pass the resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza. Thank you. Thank you. John Julie, Jessup? Julie Haddad. Um, Lynn, yes. th that person wasn't on the register when we began. Do you wanna take the people who've signed up? Yes, let's do that. So Julie, I'm sorry that we are going to move now to people who are only in the audience. Thank you. John Jessup. Hello, my name is John Jessup. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I live on Pomeroy uh, Lane, right next to the Hadley line. It is a fundamental principle of our society that the voice of the people should be heard. That's why when this entire crisis started, I wrote a lengthy, angry letter to President Biden regarding my opposition to the continued bombing and oppression of the Palestinian people. The death of over 30,000 people, 11,000 children, countless people missing, folks crammed into a bombing area like fish in a barrel, unable to move, denied political agency. What I got back from Biden was an auto-generated form letter. We need to increase our voice. We need to speak as one regarding this great humanitarian issue. Just as the council has spoken out against the Iraq war, against the apartheid in South Africa, against, against the war in Ukraine, against the terrorist actions of Hamas, you are no stranger to speaking out against injustice. Your voice, combined with the voices of cities and towns across the country will force our leaders to take notice of this issue and to take clear, definitive, decisive action to end the oppression and genocide of Palestinians. That starts with a ceasefire. Thank you very much. Athena. Brooks Ballinger. And then it will be Fatima Anwar. I just want to note that we only have about 20 minutes left. So please be as brief with your comments as you can so that others have time to speak. Hi, I'm Brooks Ballinger, an Amherst resident, a retired child care teacher and union organizer. I support the Amherst for Ceasefire Resolution because I believe our town must speak out on this crisis. Some say we're not experts on the Middle East. That's true. But you don't need to be an expert to be horrified that thousands of innocent civilians, women and children are being killed, injured, or starved. We didn't need to be experts to denounce the horrific attack by Hamas on October 7th, and we don't need to be experts to call for a ceasefire in Gaza now. Amherst for Ceasefire worked diligently to craft this resolution that described the crisis accurately, but without hatred or recrimination. We worked hard to reach out to all people of Amherst for thoughts and ideas. The result is a resolution which has over 750 resident sponsors and the support of many local organizations and businesses. We're simply calling for a lasting ceasefire. We believe we've built not divided community in town, reaching across many religions, ethnicities, political beliefs, and national origins. The resolution calls for military aid to be given only in accordance with US and international law. We're well aware that this is already required by US laws. The problem, of course, is that the US laws are not enforced. We want the laws enforced and aid to stop when they're violated. And I want to speak as an early childhood educator. 
I worked in this field because I love children and I see them as bright lights today and the vision of a better tomorrow. In Gaza today, there's an acronym, an acronym, WCNSF, Wounded Child, No Surviving Family. According to media reports, hundreds, perhaps thousands of Palestinian children are now WCNSF. The UN estimated that 17,000 children are unaccompanied or separated from their families. We need your comments to end, thank you. Asma Anwar, and then Mayreen Larity will be next. Please go ahead. Hi, my name is Fatima Anwar, and I'm a professor in electrical and computer engineering department at UMass Amherst. I teach students at the undergraduate and graduate level, and I also advise research of many PhD students. I also serve on the diversity, equity, and inclusion committee of my department. The student population at UMass is diverse. Many of my students have come from all over the US and the world, and they call Amherst their home. The university prides itself in its diverse student body and faculty and claims to strive for equity and inclusion for all. Today, I am here because I have seen the impact of the horrific war in Gaza on the health and performance of many of my students firsthand. Most of my students of color, especially black, brown, Arab, Muslims, and Jews are not able to perform well in their classes, exams, and research. They're heartbroken at how their pain is not acknowledged at the university level and also in the town of Amherst where they live where the ceasefire resolution is still pending despite witnessing the daily horrors in Gaza for the past five months. Many of my students are also afraid of speaking up about Gaza because of the fear of repercussions from university authorities and Islamophobic actions from their peers. We all are aware of when 57 UMass students protested with the sit-in at the Whitmer administration building in October to protest the horrors in Gaza, it led to retaliation from the UMass administration and the town of Amherst creating a significant impact to their studies and their careers. I, as a person of color and someone who is visibly Muslim, have moved to Western Mass and chosen to work at UMass because of the values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. The town of Amherst prides itself in. I hope the counselors today would take the first step to uphold their values of inclusion and support the ceasefire resolution and set a precedence for other institutions in Amherst like UMass to follow. Thank you. Thank you. Marion Lardy. And Benjamin Cho will be next. Mehreen Larudi, uh, Chihur, uh, District 4. Can you hear me okay? Please move to the mic a little more. Thank you. Um, I speak in favor of the resolution and specifically for the call for releasing Palestinian detainees as part of the resolution. The IDF now holds at least 3,400 West Bank Palestinians under administrative detention. Let me explain. In the US, a person detained but then not charged has a right to be released. But West Bank, West Bank Palestinians living under military <coughs> occupation have no such right. The Israeli human rights organization B'Tselem explains, in administrative detention, one is held without trial despite having committed no offense on the grounds that one plans to break the law in future. The person is detained without legal proceedings by order of the regional military commander based on evidence not revealed to the detainee nor their lawyer. Courts can renew detention for repeated six month periods. Some detainees are held for years. Since October 7th, the IDF has detained about 6,500 West Bank Palestinians and detainees now total 9,000. Prison authorities started treating detainees and prisoners more harshly, less food, worse food, uh, cold spaces without warm clothing or blankets, denial of medical treatment to the sick or injured. Detainees report that a special force called Ketir in Israeli prisons has been forcefully entering prison cells almost daily with weapons and iron rods. Prisoners and detainees have been brutally beaten with iron rods for extended periods many of whom have sustained fractures in various parts of their bodies as a result. In the name of justice, administrative detention should end as UN officials urge and all such detainees should be released. Thank you for your comment. 
Benjamin Cho, and then Eva Pauls. Hello. Okay. I'm Benjamin Zhou. I'm a student at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. During the during the so-called Cold War, during the so-called during the during the so-called Cold War, American bombers bombed bombed North Korea to the point where every city was was nearly leveled was near was nearly leveled, and at at the end of at near the end of the of the of the Korean War, bombers began to like began to bomb uh, rice fields and hydroelectric dams. Today, Israel is is bombing Palestinians and the infrastructure that 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 is required for life and such. Ultimately, this war is another example of imperialist violence against the third world. And, and the American empire is complicit in that. And we, and we, we have heard calls that it is not, that, that this town should not talk about international re relations. However, we must understand that a few miles north of here in the University of Massachusetts Amherst, the University of Massachusetts Amherst is complicit with working with the military industrial complex which today fund and support Israel in their war against the Palestinian people. As such, I call for, for, this, for this council to go further than the ceasefire and call for hostile policies against the University of Massachusetts. Athena, next. Ava Pauls. Ava, and then... Nina Levinson. Uh, Eva Paus, uh, she, her, resident of Amherst. I urge the members of the town council to support the resolution as a first step to a permanent ceasefire. I grew up in Germany with the moral imperative never again that has informed my life as a parent, as a college instructor, as a citizen and as a long-term resident of Amherst. We cannot say we don't know. We know what's going on in Gaza. We know that tens of thousands of people, innocent Palestinians have been killed. We know that hundreds of thousands are on the verge of starvation. I want Amherst to continue to be a community that values every life and that stands up against mass killings of innocent civilians and genocide. Approving the ceasefire resolution will send a message to the president, and I think probably more important to our representatives in Congress, that we want US policies in Gaza to change now. Thank you. Okay, Thank next person, please. Nina Levinson. I'm sorry, Levison. Hi, my name is Nina Levison. Um, I'm an Amherst of resident. I'm a resident of Amherst. Um, I'm speaking in front of you as a granddaughter of Holocaust survivors who came to Israel as orphans. Um, and knowing how that affected my family being here today, um, I urge you to say yes to the ceasefire resolution because. I wouldn't want what happened to my family to happen to other families and it's happening right now in our name. Um, I'd also just like to, I guess, reference the fact that we've heard so much support from Amherst today and I really urge you to vote with your constituency who has put their trust in you. And oh, I guess I have a minute and 13 seconds. So. <laughs> You could always give up and have someone else come up. <laughs> oh, I would love to do that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mike, Mike Weiler. And then Miranda Groove. Mike Weiler. I live in Amherst. Uh, many tonight have recounted the facts of this terrible human tragedy, and many others have explained why People everywhere now stand at a moment of moral crisis. The question is, 
uh, what should we do? Uh, at times like this, there are always plenty of arguments for doing nothing. It's none of our business. We should leave the matter to those in authority. The issues are too complex for us to understand. What we do won't matter anyway. I offer as rebuttal to these arguments the following from Martin Luther King. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, non-cooperation non with evil, is as much a moral obligation as is cooperation with good. <clears throat> Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? A person dies when he refuses to stand up for that which is right. A person dies when he refuses to stand up for justice. A person dies when he refuses to take a stand for that which is true. Of course we're limited. We all know we're limited with what we can do, but we must do what we can. Thank you. Next person. Miranda Grew, then Kevin Noonan, Peter Blood, and Jeffrey Gold. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Miranda Grew. I use she, her pronouns. I live in Amherst, and I'm asking you to support the resolution for a ceasefire tonight. I also work at a community center in Amherst, and every day I talk to people who are struggling to make ends meet in our town, people who have to choose between whether or not they're going to pay their heat bill or have food for the week, families who are getting evicted. Last week, I got a voicemail from an Amherst resident crying because she was removed from her apartment and she had nowhere to go. I bring this up because local issues are global issues. We know our tax dollars disproportionately pay for war with 3.8 billion going to Israel every year. It's sickening to watch the US support Israel's genocide in Palestine, period. And it's especially sickening to see our government choosing to invest big, big money in war and genocide when we have people sleeping on the street. I say this for some local context, though I shouldn't have to, even if every person in Amherst and every person in the United States had their basic needs met, there's still no excuse for silence during this genocide. I love Amherst because at our best, I know everyone here cares about humanity. When I saw this resolution going forward, I felt really proud to live here. This resolution sends a message, as other people have said, to towns across the state, to the Biden administration, and to our global community, that there are whole communities and towns of people in the US that want to see a stop to this violence. The more I think about it, the more this just feels so extraordinarily simple. Why is calling for a ceasefire so controversial? Does our community want to stop Israel's violence in Palestine, yes or no? I implore you to support this resolution for a ceasefire. It's the least we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Kevin Noonan and then Peter Blood. Thank you. Uh, Kevin Noonan, District 3. Uh, thank you for considering this tonight. Although I, I got to be honest, I'm a little saddened that we have to come here in such numbers to ask. It would seem to me that you should support this resolution offered by um, the three counselors, DeAngelis, Haneke, and um, sorry, I know we are. <laughs> um, I also wanted to say to the people in our community who have been personally touched by the attack on August, October 7th, Alicia, thank you. The people who are personally you know, touched by the attack on October 7th, it was brutal and it was unnecessary and it was a war crime and the people who did it should be brought to justice. While they were preparing their attack, the prime minister of Israel was busy trying to dismantle the judiciary. And right now, a member of his cabinet is on an unauthorized visit to the United States and he has instructed his embassy not to cooperate with his own cabinet member because he's not speaking for the country. The place is in shambles. There hasn't been a cabinet meeting since the October 7th attack. And what I want you tonight to, to recognize, as I'm sure you can, there is humanity in the millions of people who are in Gaza, 
How many phone calls do we have to get from little children who are just about to be machine gunned? How many times do we have to see people getting bread machine gunned? What are we doing? Why is... Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Peter Blood, thank you. Peter Blood, District 2. These are really difficult issues and I appreciate the struggles that I'm sure you all are thinking about this. A lot of people, I'm sure, in Palestine felt that what Hamas did on October 7th was justified because of the many years, many have lost their homes. Many of them have been in occupation for many, many years and the people in Gaza, many of them had starved under the embargo and or been bombed in disproportionate uh, things after rocket attacks. But I, I'm glad that you guys did not buy into that justification. You condemned what Hamas did. If you recognize that it did not justify killing civilians in Israel because of the horrible things that happened to Palestinians, you have to recognize also that it doesn't justify killing thousands and thousands and thousands of civilians to justify, justify because of what Hamas did or what Hamas might do in the future. I kind of like to crunch numbers. 30,000 doesn't sound like very many people, but I compared that to the American population. If you compare that to the number of people in Gaza and in the US, this is equivalent to 5 million people dying. Can you imagine what it would be like if we lost 5 million Americans? How many of us would have family members that had died? You're just as dead if you die on the bayonet or a bullet of a Hamas terrorist or a rape to death as you are if you a bomb is dropped on your apartment building. Thank you for your comments, Peter. Boy, that went fast. Thanks. <laughs> Jeffrey it Gold. Does. And then Rudy Perkins. Jeff Gold, live on Harkness Road. <clears throat> I'd like to go in a different direction this evening and ask you to get engaged with me in a little thought experiment. Imagine you grew up and there was someone in your family who you were close to, an uncle or an older cousin, whom the entire family deeply admired. They admired him for the difficult challenges he faced in his life, his courage and perseverance. But as you grow up, your admiration for this person becomes more complicated and you begin to see flaws and mistakes. You nevertheless love him very much. When this person faced difficult challenges, he lost some of his brilliance and he became more rigid. You slowly become aware that there's more than one story here. Others have been affected too. And then one day, something really terrible happened. Thousands were murdered. The relative was deeply hurt and you were too. What happened was almost unthinkable. This uncle reacted with all his power and strength and started hurting people who had hurt him. He was living out the saying, hurt people, hurt people. This response was beyond the expected. It included killing children, bombing hospitals, decimating families, destroying homes. You can't help but feel the utter distress of all this tragedy because remember, it's too personal. It's so personal. And what makes it even worse, your family is torn apart by this. As Rabbi Kate Mizrahi recently wrote, I quote, I love Israel, but not more than Judaism itself, not more than humanity. Must I wade into these troubled waters, say stop to this madness, wage peace somehow, even if, it, if its efforts aren't so perfect? Is it okay to remain silent? What would you do? What should you do? Thank you. Thank you. Next. We have reached two hours. There are 27 people left on the register. Okay. Uh, I am uh, looking to the wishes of the council at this point. Normally at this point, we would cease public comment 
And I would like to point out, this is the first time this proclamation, I mean, this resolution has come before the full council. We have not had an opportunity as a council to discuss this resolution either in private or in public. This is our opportunity. Okay. Anna. It sounded like you were looking for our input on what you want to do next. Yes. Um, I will speak for myself. I've that's about 50 minutes ish remaining of public comment. I would like to continue it if possible. You said this room closes at 10. 1030. 1030. That would give the council say about a half an hour to discuss and come to a conclusion on this resolution. Is that correct? That is correct. So I can pretty much guarantee that's unlikely for us right. to get to a vote on this resolution if we continue. So my question is if I would like to leave public comment open, but I'd also like the opportunity if folks feel that their statement has been said to remove their name from the list if they so choose. But I would like to continue public comment at this point. I'd also be pro like a two minute break at some point just to stand up and stretch, but that's personal. I can do that. Is that a motion? Yes, I move to continue public comment and give uh, give folks the opportunity to remove their name from the ledger should they so choose. Is there a second? I second that. Okay. So the motion's been made and seconded. It, we need a major majority to um, agree to this. And unless there's any other comment, I'm going to begin the vote. The vote is whether or not to continue public comment, asking people who feel that their issues have already been expressed to perhaps re remove their name. Uh, I'm gonna start with Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Councilor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmer is an aye, reluctantly. Uh, Councilor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Aye. Councilor Lord. Lord, aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councilor Ryan. Aye. Ka Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. It's unanimous. Please continue, Athena, immediately. Thank you. If I, I, I just want to mention, if you need the restrooms, they're out the door into this way, and the emergency exits are where the red signs are. Thank you. Anna, Athena, go ahead. If I call your name and you don't wish to speak, just give me a, a signal. Rudy Perkins and then Brooke Caro. Rudy? Rudy Perkins, um, he, him, Jerry Lane, and Amherst. There are many reasons I support this Gaza resolution. Please, as you leave, could you keep your conversations out in the hall? Excuse me? Could you please not discuss things in the room if you want to go out in the hall? Thank you. This is respecting other people's right to speak. There are many reasons I support this Gaza ceasefire resolution and all of its provisions, and I hope each of you votes in favor of it. But I wanna focus my brief time on one of them, and that's hostage release, one of the asserted Gaza war aims. Last November, a ceasefire, remember a ceasefire, and negotiations between Hamas and the Israeli government through the offices of Qatar and the US got more than 100 hostages released. Most of them were Israeli and two of them also had American citizenship. By contrast, I've only seen reports of Israeli military raids freeing I think three hostages. And sadly we know that the Israeli military accidentally killed three hostages as the IDF itself reported. Israel also concluded by early February that 31 hostages were already dead. And having seen how much of Gaza has been leveled by Israeli bombing, I have to worry that some of those hostages were killed by Israel itself. The New York Times, in fact, quoted released hostage Sahar Calderon as saying, many times 
I told myself that in the end, I will die from Israel's missiles and not from Hamas. Moreover, during the recent uh, Israeli commando raid on Rafah to free two hostages, reports are that over 60 Palestinians were killed, many of them children. So as you weigh this vote, please note the power of negotiated hostage release as a conjunction with ceasefires, including to release as many as six Americans citizens who are believed to still be held there. Thank you for your comments. Brooke Carroll. And then Shanna, Sharon Kearney. Please go ahead. Thank you. My name is Brooke Karuna Ananda. I go by she, her, and I am in District 5. Um, I'm here tonight as a Jewish resident of Amherst, a social worker and a mother, to ask for you to vote in favor of this resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza. During a time when our country could possibly stop the indiscriminate killing that we are all witnessing with our own eyes, we must stand on the side of justice, even in the face of criticism. We may not know everything there is to know about the history and the politics. We may not be able to fix the situation, but the least that we can do is to show that we do not support the continuing bombardment that has killed over 30,000 people, over which 25,000 women and children, one of the highest escalations in history in five months. <clears throat> I am here because I want to be one of the Jewish people who show our Palestinian neighbors and friends that there are Jews who will speak for them and stand beside them. That also means not speaking over them in regards to their liberation. This resolution has the voices of people who have been affected on all sides and have the same goal. We as Jews who support Palestine show up not to save Palestinians, but to stand in solidarity because our liberation is tied to the liberation of all oppressed peoples. If the folks who say that they care about the hostages were really honest with themselves, they would admit that if the bombing and starvation continues in Gaza when the military is largely unable to know where the location of their hostages are, then it is consequently putting them at risk as well. In order for both the Palestinian people and the Israeli hostages to have a chance at surviving, we must have a ceasefire and allow aid immediately. Please vote with your conscience and show that Amherst values life above all else, regardless of politics. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Sharon Kearney. Hi, Sharon Kearney, District 5. Um, <clears throat> she, her. I speak as an Amherst resident, parent of three kids in Amherst public schools or daycare, friend of Palestinians, Muslims, Jews, and Arabs, an educator of many years, and an empathetic human being who cannot, will not look away from this ongoing tragedy. And I urge you to vote yes on the resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza as it is written. Please do not abstain, that is a no vote. I have many reasons, but I'd like to highlight two right now. My first point is this, this is very much a local issue. It's a local issue because hundreds of people and organizations in this town are telling you that this resolution matters to them. Your constituents have worked tired, constituents have worked tirelessly to create, develop and circulate this resolution all while facing blatant racism, discrimination, and cruel double standards to which previous speakers have already spoken. We have asked you to speak as our elected representatives to amplify our voices to our state and ultimately federal government where real policy change can happen, to function as our democracy should, to tell them as enough is enough, stop using our tax dollars to participate in genocide. You do not need a PhD in Middle Eastern studies to know that the continued suffering inflicted upon innocent children every day is simply wrong. Do not let this dangerous condescending narrative that you, that we are not educated enough to take a stance continues. <clears throat> this situation is about basic human rights as defined by a number of international organizations and it's about just plain sense and common humanity. <clears throat> but while we wait for our federal, gover federal government to do the right thing, your voting yes on this resolution will create real change right here in Amherst. You will send a message to everyone and most importantly, our Palestinian Arab and Muslim community members that their lives matter and that we stand with them against the genocide that is happening before our very eyes. Your vote will send a message that this community, this town is in fact what it purports to be, a safe, welcoming, inclusive home for anyone. One where hatred based on skin color, religion, gender identity, et cetera, is not tolerated. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sorry, I let the clock go. I should not have. Next, I'm having a hard time reading this. Dr. Amy Major, I'm sorry. Okay. 
Thank you, counselors, for extending the time so I have the opportunity to speak. Um, I worked in Amherst for 20 years. I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. I am on the board of Acupuncturists Without Borders. One of the biggest challenges is we are in Israel doing trauma work. We were in Gaza and we were threatened with being killed, so we had to leave by Hamas. We were in the West Bank. We were threatened to be killed. We had to leave. One of the things that's missing in the concept of we know enough is the nuance of people being threatened with things like multiple children who were killed by Hamas when they went to a food truck to get food because they were told that the food was for the resistance fighters, not them. I'm not hearing the calling out of Hamas for a number of the atrocities in Gaza for which they are responsible. I am not a fan of the Netanyahu government, but I am a fan of the hostages being returned. I have some words from Gail Glickman who was raised in Amherst by her father, Jack Glickman. And she wrote to me last night, there was a ceasefire in place on October 6th, which Hamas broke in a murderous rampage, mutilating and killing 1400 men, women and children and babies, including Jews, Muslims, foreign nationals, Bedouins, peace activists and young people at a peace festival. Then they took and are still holding hostages, many of whom are dead. We don't know who's alive, who's dead, who's being tortured, who's been raped, who's afraid of being raped every day. We don't know. And I would love to see the resolution include the hostages being returned as a requirement for a ceasefire pause and the language be changed because some of those in prisons in Gaza and in Jerusalem are there because they have killed Israelis, including my son's best friend, Ilan Ganellis, who was murdered by a terrorist a year ago this week by a terrorist. And we can do better. Thank, Thank you. you. Jennifer Cannon and then Eliana Olkin. My name is Jennifer Cannon. I live in District 3, she, her pronouns. I am a mother. I am a grandmother. I raised all three of my daughters in this town and my grandchildren attended Fort River School. I myself went to Fort River School kindergarten through sixth grade. I had the immense pleasure of having Martha Faison and Roger Wallace as my teachers at Fort River School. They were pillars and continue to be pillars in this community of racial justice, social justice, and equity. They taught all of their children to respect life and to look beyond our differences. I bring this up because these mentors are here among us and have taught us what Amherst means. I went to UMass Amherst as a graduate mentored by Sonia Nieto, John Bracy, and so many others who are the backbone of this town. When I was in fourth grade, I had a paper route and I delivered newspapers to Chief Maya. As a young adult, an undergraduate at the University of Massachusetts, my life was turned upside down when Gregory Levy emulated himself on the Amherst Town Common and I immediately overnight became a 24 seven vigiler on the town common, begging our town to recognize the need for peace and justice and an end to the bombing in, in, in Iraq at the time. Why am I telling you this? Chief Maya came to arrest me as a young woman, as an adult. And he said, he remembered me from elementary school and he said, do you want to do this? And I said, absolutely. And I had support. We have supported our young people in this town for years to speak up and to speak out against injustice. Please do not let our children down. A no vote Thank you. and an abstention is in favor of this genocide. Thank you. Thanks. Eliana Olkin and then Jack Pearson. Eliana Olkin, she, her, Springfield, Massachusetts. Please speak into the mic, thanks. Thank you. Council members and community members, my name is Eliana Olkin and I'm a 16 year old Springfield, Massachusetts public school student. I'm the only Jewish student in my school. And additionally, I'm a certified emergency medical responder. I've worked on ambulances in Israel, provided aid to and saved the lives of Jewish, Arab, Christian, Israelis, as well as a Gazan man visiting Israel on the Israeli ambulance crew. 
that I worked on, we saved lives, regardless of backgrounds or any denominational factors. Hamas does the opposite. And it's been heartbreaking for me to see the names of people who I've helped on my ambulance list, on the list of those who have been murdered by Hamas. To have saved a person's life only to have their lives viciously taken away is be horrible behind words. I remember a wonderful 19-year-old woman whom I helped on the ambulance shift. She was murdered by Hamas on October 7th. She was 19 year old and left her entire family and many loved ones heartbroken. Do not allow this bill to further divide our community. We lost so many of our loved ones on October 7th and are still mourning those in our Jewish family held in Gaza. Let it be known they were taken, murdered, raped, and their bodies mutilated just for being Jewish and or Israeli. Hamas's goal is to wipe out the Jewish people and they have said many times, A ceasefire means nothing to Hamas, but instead means that Israeli hostages will not be freed and Jewish people around the globe will never be safe. Hamas is a terrorist group which puts, civ puts civilians, Gazan, and Israelis in danger. Hamas is the issue. Supporting a ceasefire now is supporting Hamas and the anti-LGBTQIA+, anti-human rights, and anti-Semitic regime, which it has created. Supporting the resolution will do nothing for the war, but will stoke the already burning fire of anti-Semitism in our community. And so I implore you, my dear community members and council members, to stand up to- Thank you for your comment. Jack Pearson. Sayana Plavin. And then Jacqueline Bricknell, Brickle. My name is Sianna Plavin. I, my name, my pronouns are she, her, and I live in District 5. I am a midwife and the great granddaughter of Jewish refugees. I grew up here. I went to this middle school and took the Holocaust class still offered today at Emerson High School. I remember crying, studying photos of bodies piled in mass graves and wondering, as always, as everyone always does, what I would have done. Decades from now, the photos of the genocide in Gaza will be studied by students at Amherst High School. Those students, our children and grandchildren, will know what we did or did not do. Please, I beg you, let them know that this town and the members of this council did everything in their power to stop the suffering and support our grieving community members. As a midwife, I bear witness to the most intimate moments in people's lives. I see people at their strongest and most vulnerable as they birth their babies and support their partners. I see babies take their first breaths, look into their parents' eyes, and feel what it is to be touched with love and care for the first time. Each person killed, starving, or mourning in Gaza is someone else's whole world. We all deserve to be safe and protected, to be touched with love and care, not bombs and bullets. This council voted to condemn the Hamas attacks and must also condemn the deaths of thousands of Palestinians. There's no justification for the mass suffering and death in Gaza. We cannot watch genocide in silence. Please pass the resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza. Thank you. Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline Brickle. I do wanna remind people that we're looking for people to kind of cede their time. Yeah. And then Carl Goldberg. Okay. My name is Jacqueline Brickell, and I thank you for letting me speak. I want to explain why a ceasefire, especially without a commitment from Hamas, would be disastrous. Nobody has talked about how Hamas has stopped, but for, nobody has asked for Hamas to stop its aggression, which has been, and they have been bombing Israelis continuously for years, so that the southern towns of Israel have been forced to uh, uh, build underground shelters where children can play because they can't play outside because of the bombing. And uh, Hamas has continuously done that and nobody's been protesting that. Um, Hamas has pledged to destroy not only Israel, but also Jewish people. They showed their intentions when they attacked on October 7th, they killed anyone they could. It didn't matter what the age or sex was, they dragged women and children from their hiding places and killed them off and took hostages. 
the citizen, the situation in the, for the people of Gaza is horrific, but Hamas has done nothing to help them except to complain that others should do more. The people of Gaza are in this position because what Hamas has done never, it, it has never done anything to protect them. They need to be, the people of Gaza need to be free. They need to be free from Hamas. Thank you. Thank you. Carl Goldberg and then Eve Glazer. My name is Carl Goldberg and I am a first responder and a student from the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I urge you to reconsider the proposed ceasefire resolution between Israel and Hamas. This resolution, while aiming for peace, perpetuates the cycle of violence affecting Israelis and Palestinians alike. I must add that although I disagree with this resolution, I must insist that this resolution is promoted by many good, honest, well-intentioned people, and I have no issue with any of them. It is important to acknowledge that the situation in Gaza, while complex, is not a genocide. The Israeli government strives to minimize civilian casualties, contrary to the portrayal of their actions. The crux of the matter lies in Hamas's consistent rejection of ceasefire attempts, not only from the Biden administration in Israel, but also from Arab countries like the Emirates, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia. There have been 15 proposals for a two-state, all of which have been denied by these people. Despite the best efforts of Israel, there is no Palestinian state. This proposed resolution inadvertently supports Hamas's political agenda initiated on October 7th, worsening the conflict. It does not aid Gaza civilians, but instead empowers Hamas's military and political ambitions. The intention of Hamas is to allow as many Palestinian Gazans to die as possible so that the international community will pressure the state of Israel to bow to the ridiculous demands of Hamas. Given these considerations, I strongly encourage the council to vote against this resolution. A genuine pursuit of peace requires a more nuanced approach than a ceasefire that benefits one party's political and military aims over the welfare of all individuals involved, Israeli, Palestinian, and other. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Eve Glazer and then Maya Gonzalez. Hi everyone, my name is Eve Glazier. I live in Northampton, but I work at a prominent Jewish cultural institution in Amherst. And I am here to read a letter on behalf of myself and 10 of my colleagues at this Jewish institution in Amherst supporting the ceasefire resolution. To the members of the Amherst Town Council, we, the undersigned workers at a Jewish cultural institution in Amherst, support the Amherst Town Council resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza. Our views are our own and do not represent those of, an org of our organization. And we offer support out of a commitment to a local Jewish cultural life, a thriving Jewish cultural life, a Jewish future, and the immediate and long-term safety of Palestinians and Israelis. Signed, me, Eve Glazier, Eva Gelman, Maya Gonzalez, Grisha Leifer, Caleb Schur, Margaret Frothingham, Margaret Schellinger, Sylvia Peterson, Sam Brivik, and others at our institution. Thank you. Thank you. Maya Gonzalez. And then Caridad Martinez. Hello, my name is Maya Gonzalez. I use she, they pronouns. I'm a resident of District 3 here in Amherst. Um, today, I'd like to voice my support for the ceasefire resolution as a Holocaust historian who is trained here at UMass and at the Institute for Holocaust, Genocide and Memory Studies, uh, as well as a local Jewish cultural professional, uh, again, in this town. I've dedicated my career to studying and teaching the memories of the Holocaust and other genocides in Rwanda, Turkey, Burma, Cambodia, and all around the world. Uh, I've spent my life listening to and learning from genocide survivors. They've taught me to practice active empathy with victims of mass atrocities from the past and today and always. They have showed me that this is a humanitarian crisis 
and a mass atrocity that needs to be brought to an end. I'm also speaking as a Puerto Rican woman. I understand the violence that American imperialism inflicts inside and outside of the continental United States. You may not know that American tax dollars forcibly ster sterilized and traumatized thousands of Puerto Rican women and their descendants uh, in the course of the 20th century. Now we know that these same tax dollars are funding reproductive violence against tens of thousands of Palestinian women and murdering their children. We as American citizens with a voice represented by our federal government are responsible for speaking out against this injustice and stopping the use of our funds to inflict such genocide or such violence against the Palestinian people. And finally, I speak as a Jew who is very active in this community in both religious and secular spaces. I'm proud to be in community here today with so many brave Jews who have honored our predecessors with their insistence on human rights for all minorities, no matter the risk. Uh, I'd like to voice my support for an immediate ceasefire. I'd like to say thank you and do so in my mama Loshin, Hashem Dank, Un Bafrait Palestina. Thank you. Thank you. Herodad Martinez and then Elliot Papadakos. Hi, I'm Caridad Martinez. I am Cuban and I live in New York and I have family in Amherst. A fellow journalist once said to Rafi Ziada this, why don't you stop teaching your children hatred and this will all be over? So she wrote a poem. Today my body was a TV massacre. Today my body was a TV massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits. Today my body was a TV massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits filled enough with statistics to counter measured response. And I perfected my English and I learned my UN resolutions. But still he asked me, he asked me, Ms. Ziada, don't you think that everything would be resolved and you would just stop teaching so much hatred to your children? Pause. I look inside of me for strength to be patient, but patience is not at the tip of my tongue. As the bombs drop over Gaza, patience has just escaped me. Pause. We teach life, sir. We Palestinians teach life after they have occupied the last sky. We teach life after they have built their settlements and apartheid walls. After the last skies, we teach life, sir. But my body was a TV massacre made to fit into sound bites and word limits. But they felt sorry. They felt sorry for the cattle over Gaza. So I give them UN resolutions and statistics and we condemn and we deplore and we reject. And these are two equal sides, occupier and occupy. And 100 dead, 200 dead and 1,000 dead. I wish I could wail over their bodies. I wish I could just run barefoot in every refugee camp and hold every child, cover their ears so they wouldn't have to hear the sound of bombing for the rest of their life. No sound bite will fix this. We teach life, sir. We teach life, sir. We Palestinians wake up every morning to teach the rest of the world life, sir. Thank you. Next speaker. El Elia Papadakos and then Natalia Ruiz. Hey, I'm Elliot Papadakos. I use they, them pronouns. I'm a resident of East Hampton. I've worked as an elementary school teacher just down the street in Amherst for as long as I have lived here in the Valley. I'm also Jewish, I am Israeli American, and a descendant of a Holocaust survivor. As a kid, like so many of us you've heard from today, learning about the Holocaust that wiped out my grandmother's family, I would ask, why did no one do anything? How could they not know? Today, I'm urging the council to listen to your many constituents today, asking you with a collective voice to pass this ceasefire resolution because nothing can justify the sheer scale of the violence Israel is inflicting in Gaza that we are all watching be perpetrated with our tax dollars. This is a local issue. There's been some talk at this meeting about how the resolution is divisive, how it might harm the Jewish community, but there is nothing more harmful to a community than being complicit in trying to wipe out another people. It is the violence of the Israeli state and the purposeful conflation of it with the Jewish people as a moral cover that poses the greatest threat to the worldwide Jewish community. Our safety comes from fighting for each other. It is all of our responsibility to do so and pass this resolution. No one's safety comes from indiscriminate bombing. This violence is against Jewish tradition and it won't even succeed at the Israeli government's goal. You can't bomb Hamas out of existence 
and you can't bomb your way to bringing back the hostages. And for all this focus for us as Jews, I have to ask, what about our Palestinian community? While we debate whether or not we should care about the children who are being starved at this moment, should we say something? What about our Muslim and Arab neighbors and your constituents who are seeing their family members wiped out, besieged, and left for dead by the American government? We have to center them and we have to pass the resolution. Please vote yes on this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Natalia Ruiz. Hello, um, council members. My name is Natalia Ruiz. I'm a resident of Northampton and an undergraduate student at UMass Amherst. I'm here to uh, express my support for the Amherst uh, ceasefire resolution. I've been involved in Palestinian solidarity work since 2018. I'm sure that many of us who are here who have also been in the struggle for a long time can attest to the fact that we've never seen such numbers of people showing up, being aware of what's happening in Palestine. I can speak to my personal experiences that organizing events often had a very low turnout and I've never seen numbers like this. And I want you to look at your constituency here and realize that this is what progress looks like. Since when I started my activism, even back then in 2018, 2019, 2020, we were holding vigils for entire families that were killed in airstrikes in Palestine, in the West Bank and in Gaza. Even back then, we were organizing mutual aid to help families that were struggling under occupation to fulfill their basic needs. And this is to say that any rhetoric that you hear that this started on October 7th, that it was unprovoked, is a lie. It's just, it's just a lie. And I want you guys to recognize that and listen to your constituency, to the overwhelming majority of people here who support this resolution. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. Noel Nobani. And then Cyrus Safa Zadek. My name is Noel Nubani, and I'm an Amherst resident. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I'm a Palestinian American who has lived nine of my formative years in the West Bank. I could sit here and talk about the daily humiliation and violent control I experienced living in under an illegal occupation, but that's not what we are speaking about today. Instead, I'm touching on a topic with, an even le with even less moral ambiguity, and that is whether there should be a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. What we are seeing unfold in Gaza today extends beyond a humanitarian crisis. The ICJ has ruled it as probable genocide and has urged Israel to take every action step to prevent one. And everything we have seen since then has been the contrary. We have witnessed on our screens a hundred starved Palestinians gunned down as they sought humanitarian aid. We have listened to the unforgettable cries of a six-year-old Hind Rajab as she was gunned down by an Israeli tank alongside her family and the medics seeking to, seeking to save her life as they sought safety. This is only touching and scratching the surface of the level of violence that is unfolding with over 30,000 lives lost, half of which are children. In taking and passing this resolution, you are not making a political or taking a political position. You are taking a stance in support of the sanctity of life. You are saying that you do not condone forced starvation, forced displacement and indiscriminate killing of an innocent civilian population for the most part, a Palestinian or other, because this does set a precedence. We, we need to ask you and to that finish. Is all Thank you very I, much. I ask that you guys uh, please, vote tonight. We're trying please. to get other people to speak. Thank Cyrus you. Cyrus Safazadeh. Oh, he is not here. Deborah Kolodny. And then Julian Hines. My name is Deborah Kolodny. I'm a uh, resident of District 1 in Amherst, and I'm a rabbi. There's been a lot of talk about uh, folks not being experts. Some of us here are experts. 
And I want to say that the question before you, which I am totally in support of this resolution, the question before you is not complicated. You don't need to decide whether there should be one state or two states or a confederation. You don't need to decide how to um, heal the wounds, make massive reparations. You don't have to decide that. You just have to decide to agree that the continued massacre of civilians has to stop. That's all you have to do. Uh, so many have said what I would like to say, but I wanna add that um, I'm part of a group of 300 rabbis for ceasefire. I'm part of a network of progressive Jewish organizations that tomorrow will be making a statement to the press in support of a ceasefire. I am part of a coalition of rabbis that um, is aligned with the organization Trua, which is coming out with a statement for a ceasefire. And I stand in alignment with organizations in Israel, Palestine called Standing Together, a land for all combatants for peace, families of hostages, B'Tselem, rabbis for human rights, and over 40 other coexistence and co-resistance organizations supporting a ceasefire. You would not be alone in making this decision. The wind is at your back. Thank you. Thank you. Next person. Julian Hines. Hi, then, how are you? Uh, my name is Julian Hines. I'm an Amherst resident, um, a senior at Amherst Regional High School and a member of Sunrise Amherst. Just this weekend, Sunrise voted unanimously to endorse this resolution that's before the council. And we want to make sure that this resolution gets voted tonight. I don't wanna see this pushed off to have another four hour meeting where the council struggles to push this through. Amherst taxpayers- If you wanna see it happen, then stop. Thank you. Amherst Julian, please. Thank you. Amherst taxpayers have contributed over $243,000 to this cause um, through your federal tax dollars in Israel. And we are really just, we've gotten to a point where we need to see this stop and the council needs to send the message that the taxpayers of Amherst say enough is enough of killing children with our money. Thank you. Thank you. Next. I'm Rita Ruder and, and then all of Yale. I'm Amrita Rutter and I'm a former resident of District 2 and a current student at um, Amherst Regional High School. I am a proud Jew and a proud supporter of this ceasefire resolution along with Sunrise Amherst. You have an opportunity tonight to show us that you're truly listening. If you vote unanimously for this resolution, you are showing us that we are heard and seen and loved in our community. I urge you to open your eyes, ears, and not to fall asleep as you continue to discuss this for what I know is going to be a long night, most likely. Um, listen to what we have said from the inside out and from the bottom up. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. All of Yale. And then Andrea Olkin. Good evening. My name is Olive. I'm a Jewish student at UMass Amherst studying linguistics, and I believe in a peaceful coexistence for all in Israel-Palestine. I've come to speak out against the current ceasefire resolution. There are some folks who believe in the dissolution of Israel as the world's only Jewish state in favor of some idealistic one-state solution whereby Jews lose the right to self-determination in our ancestral homeland. Let me tell you in no uncertain terms, this will not happen. Israelis are not going anywhere and neither are Palestinians. Pragmatically speaking, that leaves a two-state solution. Hamas, an internationally designated terrorist organization, also serves as the current government of Gaza, a territory integral to the creation of a Palestinian state. In direct conflict with the best interests of the very people they profess to represent, Hamas has committed repeatedly to destroying the entire state of Israel from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. In fact, by establishing a sophisticated network of tunnels and transforming Gaza into a staging ground for the very type of bloodthirsty assault we saw on October 7th, Hamas showed that it was not only capable of acting on its radical commitment, but willing to work towards the fulfillment of its extremist agenda at any cost. And since October 7th, Hamas leaders have stated time and again that given the opportunity, they would repeat the atrocities and war crimes of that dark day every chance they got. The, cease, the ceasefire resolution before us ignores this geopolitical reality, and I believe it does so by design. It calls for an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza, 
Many governments, including our own, are already working on this, but certain conditions must be met for the ceasefire to last. To demand that a ceasefire occur immediately without acknowledging the complexities of making it happen is both reckless and highly unrealistic. Don't have time to finish, so. Um, thank you for your comments. Thank you very much. Andrea have a nice Olkin. Hi, my name is Andrea Olkin. I'm a graduate of UMass, a teacher at Lander Grinspoon Academy, a mother of three. I live in Springfield, but I gave birth to my three kids on Southeast Street. Uh, so, None of those who are asking for the ceasefire, I notice, are holding Hamas accountable. Hamas kills Gazans. No one is calling out Hamas. A ceasefire takes two sides. I want to remind the body of the sexual and gender-based violence that vi victims that victims um, of October 7th had to have the shame and the physical scars of the survivors and the need for OBGYN care after rape. The UN Women's Committee did not and still has not mentioned anything about any of these atrocities. We have, com have we conveniently forgotten about the hostages? It's been 149 days since innocent men, women, children were captured. 134 elderly babies, parents, children who did not want the attack, peaceniks, they just wanted to exist. The bodies of Judith Weinstein Haggai and her husband Gadi are still in Gaza. The desecration of the dead is a horrific thing and that's exactly what happened. We are pulled apart and we pray for the hostages, the elderly, the babies, the parents. We have seen what happens in communities where a ceasefire resolution has passed. It's like a dog whistle to anti-Semitism. We've already seen posters of hostages being ripped down. We've already seen violence at UMass. Here in 2024 in Western Mass. Not when a 16 year old girl was praying for her brother not to be attacked on a college campus. When a Jewish high school receives a bomb threat or where swastikas are drawn. Thank on, you. That's, this was half, a, that's just half an hour away from here. Thank you. Lakota Sando. And then Nick Yaffe. Hello. Thank you. Can you hear me? Please move to the mic. I'm an Amherst resident, a current graduate student at UMass and an undergrad alumni from UMass as well. I work professionally for international human and civil rights organizations. Most importantly, I'm a mother of two and a person of conscience. This morning, I woke to an image of a three-year-old child in a pink sweatshirt with two kittens on it. Her tiny fingers curled delicately, her black leggings bent at the knees as if she were sleeping peacefully, except she was lying in a pool of her own blood. Her eyes stuck open, staring blankly, her mouth hanging open, her tiny white teeth still perfect, her skin pale from loss of life. This is a horror that no one should ever see. Yet these are the images I have woken to daily for 150 some days, multiples daily, seen with my own eyes. One would have been too much. As a mother, my stomach turns inside out. My hands shake, my brain goes blank. I cannot concentrate on my studies. I go to bed thinking of the little ones sleeping in wet tents with no blankets. I choke in tears on the sandwich on my sandwich, thinking of the children unable to eat. I wake up crying for the mothers, screaming over their dead children and the children crying over their dead parents. These are not numbers, they are not speculations. They're just a sample of what I've seen since October 7th with my own eyes. But if that's not enough, on January 26th, the International Court of Justice declared it was plausible Israel is committing genocide with our taxpayer dollars and that they must cease and they have done nothing of the sort. January 26th was 37 days ago. There's no way to claim neutrality or ignorance to abstain tonight as a vote for continued genocide. More murder like the girl in the pink sweatshirt, one of at least 13,000 so far with each day that goes by more and more. Thank you. Thank you. Nick Yaffe and then John Bonifaz. Hi. 
Hi. Um, I've, I've devoted my life to working with children and making sure they feel safe and secure. So, so many people have spoken on behalf of just the pure human toll that this has taken on children and families in Gaza. I'm speaking on behalf of them, but also on behalf of the children and young people of Amherst. So your passing this resolution will say to them that you believe in peace, in a peaceful resolution. You're saying this will be confirming what we teach in the Amherst Public Schools, that when you come into the schools, whether you're Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Hindu, whatever, wherever country you come from, we believe in working things out peacefully. We believe in understanding each other. And that's why I urge you to support this, support this for the children of Amherst, so that they can see that our leaders mirror what we are teaching them in schools. And lastly, as the rabbi said, for us, this is a time in Amherst to listen to each other, to listen to each other's pain. There are groups, courageous groups in Israel made up of Palestinians, Arabs, Jews, who are working together. One, as she mentioned, is standing together. Another that's given me inspiration during this time of despair is called Hand in Hand Schools. These are six schools that are taught, children are taught in Hebrew and in Arabic. Thousands of children are coming because their families want to build a better, a more peaceful coexistence in Israel. So hand in hand schools standing together, if you're looking for a little bit of hope. So thank you. Thank John Bonifaz. Good evening, my name is John Bonifaz. I live here in Amherst in District 1. I have planned remarks in support of this resolution. I will not be giving them. I will see back my time. My main point is to urge this council to vote tonight. It is not acceptable to postpone this vote to another meeting. I've been in this building for town meetings that have gone way past midnight. So the argument that this must end at 1030 holds no water, holds no water. If the public will not accept it, hundreds of your constituents have spoken out on this matter. We urge you to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Julie Haddad on Zoom is our last commenter. Julie, please go ahead. That's it. Oh no, I'm I'm here. Sorry, I just I didn't I thought I was kicked out of line, so I just needed a minute. Um, so I'm a, a parent of three. I'm a resident of North Amherst. I'm a teacher, um, in the Amherst Public Schools. I'm a special ed teacher at Crocker Farm, and I'm a member of uh, Valley Families for Palestine. And um, I want to read a letter that was written that um, many of our constituents, or sorry, many of our um, members signed, um, but sorry, I'm having trouble bringing it up now because um, I wasn't expecting to be called on, but I'm just gonna speak from the heart then um, and just say that I support what's been said this evening in favor of the resolution that our group um, is calling families together and people are turning out in, you know, fivefold what we're expecting in terms of showing up at our events. Um, they're bringing their children because as Nick just mentioned, this is important for the children of Amherst as well. Um, safety for children anywhere is safety for children here. Violence is not gonna bring safety to children anywhere. Um, and so I, I ask for you to vote tonight in favor of a ceasefire. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to proceed to the action items on our agenda. The first action item is the 2024 Tibet National Uprising Day Proclamation. I'm going to place the following motion on the table and seek a second. The motion is to adopt the 2024 Tibet National Uprising Day Proclamation as presented. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the council? 
Seeing none, I'm moving immediately to a vote. Uh, Anna Devlin got here. Aye. Councilor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Mandy Jo Hannick. I've been sorry, Councilor Hannicky. Aye. Pat, uh, Bob Hegner. Aye. Aye. Councilor Lord. Lord, aye. Uh, Pam Rooney. Yes. Councilor Ryan. Stayed. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. It's unanimous. No, it's not. With one abstention. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that correctly. One abstention. Thank you. So it's 12 in favor and one abstention. Um, we are now moving to the resolution for ceasefire in Gaza. I want to just pause for one moment. There is a resolution in your packet. That is the resolution that GOL reviewed for clear consistency and actionability. Because I was contacted, as is our practice, by three counselors, none of whom constitute a quorum of any committee, to make a motion this evening, I am going to recognize those counselors to make that motion. That in no way violates open meeting law. There has been no outside uh, deliberation about this in any way that constitutes a quorum of the council. So with that, I'm calling on Pat DeAngelis. Thank you. Before I uh, share the amended resolution, I want to say that this resolution was created by collaboratively created by members of Cease, um, Amherst for Ceasefire. It, um, the amendments that you'll hear in the motion were also collaboratively reviewed and accepted. Um, so now I'll make, I'll do this. We bring this resolution forward to the council at the request of over 750 resident sponsors, along with 60 business and organizational sponsors. We also bring it with a heavy heart because there is pain and division in our community. But most importantly, we bring it with the clear conviction that this is not the time for silence. In a spirit of hope, I move to adopt the resolution in support of a ceasefire in Gaza amended as follows. In the community sponsor line, replace the number 240 with the phrase more than, more than 760. In the first whereas clause, replace the word took with the word killed and replace the lives the word lives, sorry, with the phrase people, including civilians and children, and took approximately 240 hostages. Is this on the... Um, it is. Please okay. enlarge it if you can. Thank you. I'm sorry. In the second whereas clause, add the words and bombardment after the word siege and replace the number 27,500 with the number 30,000. In the fifth whereas clause, replace the comma after the word released with a semicolon. Replace the phrase, no further hostages or prisoners with the phrase, only two more hostages. And replace the phrase, more than 25 have died with the phrase, as long as the violence continues, more hostages will continue to die. In the six whereas clause, replace the phrase government has pledged with the phrase administration has requested. Replace the word to after military aid with the word for and add the phrase currently pending in Congress after the words Israeli government. In the seventh whereas clause, replace the word was with the phrase has three times been Replace the word the after the word veto with the word a, 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 and add the phrase in Gaza after the word ceasefire. In the eighth whereas clause, add the word continuing before the word conflict and replace the phrase is rapidly spreading to the West Bank, Lebanon, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, and beyond with the phrase in Gaza threatens to destabilize the whole region. In the first now therefore clause, delete the comma 
and add the word end after the first use of the word Gaza. Replace the phrase and end to unconditional with the word for and add the phrase to be conditioned on strict adherence to the United States and international rights laws. After the phrase Israeli government, end. Adding the list of, and finally, adding the list of community sponsors to the end of the document. I want to thank Amherst for ceasefire for Is their hard work. Is there a second? I would like to second that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd like to ask the sponsors if they have very brief comments so that we can move to other deliberation. We do. Councillors Walker, DeAngelis, and I thank and acknowledge the more than 1,100 residents, local businesses, organizations, and individuals with Amherst connections that have co-sponsored, endorsed, and supported this resolution. The amount of local vocal support is incredible. The Amherst Town Council has always stood strongly in support of human rights. Each December, the council passes the Human Rights Day Proclamation with its, quote, dedication to the fundamental proposition of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that each one of us everywhere and at all times is entitled to the full range of human rights and that it is every person's responsibility to uphold them. These universal human rights include the right to life, liberty and security of person in article three and the right to a standard of living, including food, clothing, housing and med medical care in article 25. The town council has regularly adopted measures reinforcing our support for these rights without concern that we were acting on matters beyond our jurisdiction. Two years ago this month, the council adopted a resolution supporting Ukraine and condemning Russia, where we vigorously condemned the horrific loss of life, suffering, devastation, and catastrophic humanitarian crisis, demanded Russia end its war, urged the US government to convince Russia to uphold international obligations and cease its attack, and expressed our unequivocal support for those affected. Five months ago, the council adopted a resolution in wake of Hamas's attack on Israel, which supported equal measures of justice and freedom for Israelis and Palestinians, grieved with the Israeli people and their loved ones who have been savagely murdered or are being held hostage, expressed unequivocal condemnation of Hamas and its appalling acts of terrorism, and stood in solidarity with Amherst residents directly impacted. Like the Ukraine resolution, this resolution recognizes the catastrophic humanitarian crisis in Gaza, calls for a ceasefire and seeks adherence to international laws. Like the resolution condemning Hamas's terrorist attack, this resolution supports Amherst residents directly affected by the ongoing crisis. We believe the town council and community continues to stand against injustice, which includes supporting unobstructed humanitarian aid, condemning the killing of civilians, urging the release of hostages and detainees and ensuring the US government upholds its laws. The ceasefire resolution in front of you today is consistent with the council's prior actions and vocal support of human rights. Therefore, we urge our fellow councilors to support this resolution. We also request that you give the over 760 resident sponsors of this resolution the courtesy of an up or down vote on it as moved tonight by Councillor DeAngelis. This is the language that resulted from significant collaboration amongst many members of our community. It is the language that our fellow residents agreed to sign on as sponsors to. It is the language that should be voted on. If any of my fellow counselors seek amendments that significantly alter the resolution, we respectfully request that you propose such language in a separate resolution that you sponsor after a vote on this resolution occurs. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Walker, did you have any words you wanted to add? Not at this time, thank you. Okay. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. I'm going to give the council the opportunity to spend some time looking at it on the screen, please, Athena, since none of the other counselors have seen this. So before you is the actual motion, is the actual resolution as amended by the motion. I'm going to give the council the opportunity to spend a little time looking at it. She moved to enlarge it. She just, she just enlarged it. No, I was taking it up bigger. <laughs> You're asking
Okay, now can we scroll? Are we ready to scroll? Thank you. It's my understanding that the counselors who have placed this motion on the table are unwilling to accept any revisions. That is actually not the council's normal process. And in fact, once a resolution is placed before the council, it has always been the council's right to make additional amendments, just as have been presented before us. So I um, totally and completely want to express my respect for the work of the many, many people who have contributed to this and the consensus building. But I must say that once a council resolution, our resolution has been placed before the council, the council has a right to discuss it and they should and continue to have a right to amend it. Point of order, we did not say we were unwilling to. We requested an up or down vote on this. That does not mean we were asking for none. You, you asked for an up or down my statement, vote, right? You misconstrued my statement. I'm sorry, then please clarify. Mandy Jo? We asked that the council give the resident sponsors the courtesy of an up or down vote as moved by us because of how it resulted to. And we asked, although we know we cannot demand mm -hmm. or stop, mm -hmm. but we asked that if counselors want amendments that they, we respectfully requested that they propose the language in separate resolutions after an up or down vote. We know we cannot demand that or stop anything else from happening. That was our request. Okay. Councilor Walker. Um, Mandy Joe mostly said what I was going to say, but I did also just want to state that any amendments, if were proposed, would have to go through a vote anyhow. Correct. Anna? I'd like to move to a vote on this item. Are you calling the question? I am calling the question. Okay. The question's been called. 
Is there a second? Right. Is second. there a second? Thank you. I, I request <clears throat> recognition to make a uh, privilege the, that I can oh. exercise. Hold on. So the question's been called, and was there a second? Yes, Mandy Jo seconded. Okay. So the question's been called and seconded. That means we. It's not debatable. It's, it's not, not debatable. An immediate vote. And we, we move, to, move to an immediate vote. But okay. I have a point of order. A point of order. Uh, Andy? Point of order is uh, that I think that a right to postpone under. Charter Section 210C oh, no. can occur at any time. Athena? The motion on the floor right now is calling the question. Are you right to postponing the call the question motion? No. So a counselor has exercised their right to postpone. No, no, he no, is not no. because he, he, did not. he cannot. Well, Andy just said that he is not exercising his right to postpone on the motion on the floor, which was my motion to call the question, which was seconded by Mandy. Thank Joe. you. All right. So the question on the floor is the motion as presented. No. The motion to call motion. the question. I'm sorry, motion to call the question. There is no debate on that. Okay, we're moving to the motion to call the question. We, we begin with uh, Councillor Ette. Is this a vote or could we speak about the motion? No. This is where you either agree that the motion's been the motion has been made to call the question. Calling the question means we move to an immediate vote, and at that point, and there is no debate. If you want to debate, then you want to vote against calling the question. If you want to not debate or move, then you vote yes to call the question. And I would no. Lynn Griesmer is a no. Councillor Haneke. No. Bob Hagner. No. Councillor Lord. Um, I apologize, I'm just trying to understand. Okay. Uh, I, uh, can I abstain? Okay. Pam Rooney. No. Councilor Ryan. No. Counsel Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. No. Jennifer Taub. No. Alicia Walker. No. Pat DeAngelis. No. Anna Devlin Gothier. Yes. The motion to call the question fails. We go back to the motion for the motion on the table is the motion to pass the resolution as amended and presented this evening. Andy Steinberg, you have your hand. Yes, I think I need to say something to the public first. Um, and that is the for various reasons, I am very much in support of having a resolution, but I think it needs to be the right resolution. And it is a resolution that needs to belong to the council. And for, we are operating under the open meeting law. The open meeting law provides that council has all of its debate in a public setting. So we have not had any discussion. So hundreds and hundreds of people have been able to talk about this with three sponsors and the remaining members of the council have not been given the opportunity to see what was gonna be proposed tonight until tonight, because that was the work of a small group. And uh, therefore um, we couldn't 
uh, take the opportunity to look at it and see what we agree to, what we might not agree to. And I find the process therefore to be very troubling because um, there were several of us that, that have been thinking about this and realizing that there are some amendments that we believe not only address the um, purpose of the resolution, but make it stronger by um, working through both uh, statements made by people who've spoken tonight and through public comment in favor and people who've had reservations. Um, so I, um, I think that rushing this for tonight, um, while I understand all of the reasons to rush it for tonight, is actually contrary to the, the whole process and um, is disrespectful of council that is being asked to take a vote on something where we have not had a fair chance to have a thorough discussion and understanding about what we're being asked to vote on and um, to express some thoughts to our fellow councilors about what might be done to strengthen this. and. Uh, so I'm very concerned about where we are. Councilor Ryan. I have no desire to vote no this evening, um, but if this gets pushed through the way it's going, I will vote no. I've heard and continue to hear this evening the very real pain of those in our community who feel they have been marginalized and that their experience and suffering has been ignored and left unrecognized. I hear that. This body back in October acknowledged the suffering and pain of one segment of our community. It seems only right and just we do the same for another. I hear that. I wish there was some way that the 13 of us could communicate our own awareness of that pain, our recognition of that pain and our collective desire for it to cease and for there to be a just and equitable solution and an end to the terrible loss of life that continues even to this day. That's a measure I could support wholeheartedly in the spirit of the prior resolution in October. But this measure at the moment is not that measure in my humble opinion. And if we push to a vote tonight, I will vote no. Thank you, excuse me. Are there other counselors who would like to speak? Anna. <laughs> All right. This town has taught me a lot. This council has taught me a lot. And as we've seen tonight, it's taught many others a lot. It was really exciting to see some of my former classmates here. One of the key things that this town has taught all of us, it seems, is that, va that humanity is to be valued. We value it with our actions. We value it with our advocacy. We value it with our words. And for this particular body, we value it with our votes. I recognize that there is so much humanity wrapped up in this resolution. And I want to share my gratitude to those who have shared your humanity with us throughout this process. I appreciate the call or the reminder uh, about how we consider this from the heart, from the head, from the soul. These entities do not function separately. They inform one another. And this resolution seems to be the perfect meeting place of that head and that heart. With my head and my heart, I will be supporting this resolution with the amendments as provided by the council sponsors. And I believe that for this council to ignore those, given that I recognize we have not had a lot of time but given that by the time this comes back to us, if we postpone it, we will have more amendments because the numbers will have to be updated again. So please, 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 please stop, stop, stop. Please stop. She's going to gavel you. Please don't make her gavel you. Do not make me do this. Please. Lynn, no, no, no. It's okay. I appreciate the support, y'all, but we've got it in our rules that you can't show auditory, audible signs of support. So thank you. You can wave at me. So I do. Okay. I didn't mean it. Sorry. So. My point is, I do believe that for this council to ignore that is to let down that value of seeing our humanity in this moment and of 
our ability to read and comprehend something that is in front of us right now. Those changes are not news if you've been tuned into the world. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. Are there any other counselor comments at this time? Jennifer Taub. I had what I thought would be a friendly amendment. Am I allowed to introduce that? Uh, the, there is an amendment on, there is a motion on the table. And yes, in my book, you can amend, but I will just reiterate that the counselors that have introduced this motion have said they do not, not want this one meant. Lynn, that's not what they meant. <laughs> Mandy clarified that that's not what they meant. I think we need to have a conversation about whether or not we are going to be, as a council, willing to amend a motion we are going to adopt. And the fact that it was presented to us in a way that said either take it or leave it makes me feel like I have been stripped of my rights as a counselor. Jennifer. Yes, I, you know, echoing what you said, um, we were told as counselors that if we wanted to propose um, amendments, and I think mine is a friendly amendment, to submit that to the clerk of the council uh, prior to the meeting, nobody knows who made an amendment or the, the con what any of the amendments were. But I did come into the meeting thinking that I would be able to do that. Pam Rooney. Would Thank you. Um, I, I guess I would agree. Uh, I perfectly, I'm not perfectly. I'm, I am supportive of the resolution. I don't like the, I don't like the idea that we can't tweak it because as everyone has said, this is our first opportunity. We're also told that we could not um, send our concerns and our um, adjustments to the, to the resolution to the, the three support, um, sponsors because that would be a violation of open meeting law. So basically we are following the rules and that means that we do have the opportunity to um, make an adjustment if, it, if we feel it's needed in order to gain our support for the resolution, which is generally pretty good, but maybe lacking something. I would like to hear Jennifer Taub's friendly amendment. Councilor Walker. Um, yes, I just wanted to state that I fully support Mandy's opening statement and just wanted to clarify um, that she cannot change the rules of the council. And so we were not stating that no one can make an amendment. We were simply stating our preference as sponsors. Um, and that is all that it is. Um, so the rules of the council stand as they always are. The reason why an amendment cannot be offered right at this minute is because there is currently an amendment on the table. It's not because Mandy Jo says that we don't prefer to have an amendment. So it's just a simple process question at this point. Um, and so again, our preference is that we accept this as it is presented because of the work that has gone in with um, the community uh, sponsors. But I do also understand as a counselor, the importance of being able to read and review documents before voting on them. I understand wanting to do your due diligence before voting on something that has significant impact. Um, with that being said, we did have a version of this resolution well in advance. This is amendments on the table, not a completely new resolution. We have countless times amended and edited resolutions in live meetings and voted on those resolutions at those meetings the same day that those amendments were proposed. So this is not a new thing that is facing the council. This is not a new thing we are asking you to do right now. You have time in front of you to look at the amendments and see whether or not you agree. You also have your own discretion to propose any amendments that you wish to propose when once we have already voted on the amendment that's on the floor at this time. In fact, when a motion is made on the floor as an amendment, then when a motion is on the floor and this motion is on the floor for this, 
in fact, there can be a motion to amend without voting on the full motion. Okay, great. I so, want to, just to clarify the actual process of amendments. Thank in you, fact, Ed. there can be an amendment and another amendment. The max is, is, is two amendments. Thank you, Lynn, for making that clarification. So we just want to be very clear, and thank you for helping me, that we are not stripping any counselors of their rights at this time. Um, and I also just wanted to state that I firmly believe that as an elected representative, it is our moral obligation to speak out against injustice wherever it occurs. The ongoing violence in Gaza affects all of us, regardless of our geographic distance. It's a humanitarian crisis that demands our attention and our action. And by calling for a ceasefire, we are not only advocating for peace and stability in a region torn apart by conflict, but also affirming our commitment to human rights and dignity. Our resolution sends a powerful message that even from a small town in Massachusetts, we refuse to remain silent in the face of suffering and oppression. Thank you. I'm going to go back to Jennifer Taub and she is going to make her motion to amend. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I would like, well, to fr I would like to move that the clerk um, of the council cause a copy of the resolution in the wake of the Hamas attack on Israel to be included in our mailing to our state and congressional representatives, as well as to President Biden and Vice President Harris. The resolution current before, currently before the council states, quote, whereas on October 16th, 2023, the Amherst Town Council gave unanimous support to a resolution condemning the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel that took nearly 1,200 lives. I, that language um, has since been proposed to be amended by the sponsors. Um, but that resolution that the council approved on October 16th does not include the quote, therefore be it resolve clause instructing the clerk of the council to quote, cause a copy of the resolution to be sent to President Joseph Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Edward Markey, and Representative Jim McGovern, unquote. So therefore, these elected officials will not have seen the October 16th, 2023 resolution that is referenced in the current ceasefire resolution. So I would like to request and propose that that prior resolution, which was never sent on to our elected officials um, because it was not requesting action, but since it is referenced in the currently the the resolution currently pro before us, that this be included in what is sent to our elected officials. Thank you. Athena, is there a second? Yeah, is Shane, there a second? Shane seconds. Okay. The motion. Th this is amendment to make clarity the motion that's on the table. Athena, is there anything else you wanted to add to this? Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Are there any comments on this motion? I really wanna ask counselors to be mindful of the time and I'm going to ask the clerk of the town council to use the clock. Counselor Walker. Um, I just have a clarifying question for Jennifer. So mm -hmm. the amendment to this resolution is to add that wording to this resolution or to just also send a copy with the resolution? It's actually to add that language to the previous resolution. So can that no, motion no. point of order? Point yes. of order. It's it's to mail both resolutions. It's to mail amendment. both resolutions. But so is it not actually an amendment to no. the motion itself? Is it just like an action of the council of mailing both? Or are we asking for the wording of this resolution to be changed? I believe Jennifer, please. Well, I was um, told it needed to be presented in the form of a motion. Right. I mean, for me, that would, this, to know that this was going to be included would impact, might have an impact. I mean, it might have an impact on, on whether other amendments needed to, we would want to see other amendments made. So I was told it's, it's, I don't believe it's changing the language of the, resolution before us, but I was told if I wanted this to happen, I would have to present it in the form of an amendment. That's why I consider it a, fem a friendly amendment. Mandy Joe. So I believe 
to, to clarify, if I may, mm -hmm. um, Jennifer, that Jennifer is essentially asking that the last be it further resolved item of this resolution be amended to add the phrase and the re resolution in the wake of Hamas's attack on Israel after the first, after, after the phrase copy of this resolution. I believe. Yes. If that clarifies it for others. Uh, so Athena, could you show that on the screen, please? Okay. Are there any uh, any further questions, Andy? I'm still having problems with this entire process um, as being so out of line with any process we've ever had on any other consideration of an action because there have been significant amendments to resolution that we do not have in writing, did not have in writing in advance. We do not have in writing before us now other than um, on, a, on the screen in little pieces. We keep, don't have time to reflect on it. Um, I understand all of the desire to have a vote now, but I think that a vote now is very much against the entire process of a council that is trying to operate under the open meeting law and that you are violating the open meeting law by demanding that we consider a motion without having an opportunity for due consideration and deliberation, which is what the charter expects that this council do. Um, and therefore, I really do not um, think that this uh, process of now forcing action on a motion that has been significant, has had significant number of amendments that we did not see until this time and that I have an opportunity to consider um, is um, just totally out of bounds. Um, the motion has been made and seconded to add the following to the amended, to the motion that's on the table. Is there any further comment? Anna. I think, Andy, I, I recognize where your point is coming from, but where I'm struggling is that the reason why those amendments were presented kind of en masse was that the sponsors kind of had their act together and, and put them all on a sheet of paper for us. I think that the difference is that this happens often where people come in with amendments that they individually has, have thought up and they say them out loud and then Athena types them in. That happens constantly to resolutions, to proclamations, to anything that we have up in front of us. And so I think that while it may seem overwhelming to have these up all at the same time being put in here, I question whether it's really that significantly different than the process that happens quite regularly. And I know that I don't have as much experience, but I've seen this happen quite regularly where amendments are presented, sometimes substantial amendments are presented in the moment and are put into a resolution, proclamation, bylaw, et cetera, and then voted on that same day. So I, I do reject that premise. I think that the, the way that they were presented is slightly different, but I think actually benefits us in being able to look at them all at once. Anna, yes. I mean, uh, Andy. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. It, um, this is significantly different because of the number in the size of the amendments um, that have been presented, it is really totally contrary to any prior practice that we have never had this extensive a change with this much time pressure involved because we've been told that uh, the school is requiring us to vacate the auditorium. And for all of those reasons, you know, if we were under a normal setting, we would uh, at least have an opportunity to uh, take a break and get 
um, copies uh, in paper of the amendments so that we can look at them. You, uh, this is really a uh, process that is totally contrary to the open meeting law. And I think that I would probably uh, have grounds for a complaint to the attorney general about this. Mandy Joe, I call the question on the motion to amend. Okay, the question's been called. Is there a second? Second, DeAngelis. Okay. It's non debatable. We move mo immediately to whether or not to amend the motion that's Just on the table debate. with the following statement, as you see on the screen and the resolution in wake of the Hamas attack on Israel. That's what you're voting on, just that we're, piece. No, we're voting to whether to stop debate on the motion I'm to sorry, amend. But, I'm sorry, you're right. We, we have to vote to stop debate, okay? Before And we're stopping debate on this issue. All right. Um, uh, Lynn Greisper is an aye. Mandy Jo Haneke. Aye. Bob Hagner. No. This is only on this amendment. Uh, Councillor Lord. Wait. Lord, I. I'm sorry. No, you were. You said it was. We were going to stop debate. Is that no, correct? On, that. on this. On this. On this one only. Then I'll change my vote to yes. Thank you. I, I wanted to make sure I clarified that. Councillor Lord. Lord, I. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Councillor uh, Kathy yes. Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Aye. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gauthier. Aye. Uh, Councillor Ette. Aye. Unanimous. We have amended the no. motion. That's no. no. We have only voted to stop discussion. All right. Now we're going to move to whether or not you approve this amendment to the motion that's on the table. Okay? Councilor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hagner. Aye. Councilor Lord. Lord, aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councilor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Yes. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Councilor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmers and I. That's unanimous. We have now amended the motion that's on the table to include no, the phrase. All right. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Got that one? Yeah, All right. Done. Now we're back to any further discussion or comments. Andy, you have your hand up. Now, come on. Yeah, I mean, this is, but what was the problem was is that I had a series of, um, but not a large number of amendments that I was, that I had prepared for the original motion that I thought would strengthen the original motion by uh, making sure that it was factually correct and that it was going to um, have the ability to get the entire council together and I think the entire community together to vote to, to be in support of this. I'm very troubled still by what's going on, what I was proposing, going to propose as amendments. And I'm gonna say what they are without making a motion uh, because I'm not sure, because I really believe that at this point that there's uh, a, an atmosphere that is uh, very uncomfortable for me, and um, would, would essentially, essentially, I, I assume that it's not going to that they that there would be problems. But one, to add a whereas clause that Hamas positioned the military assets in Gaza such that many Gaza residents are in harm's way. Another was whereas fighting continues on both sides with Hamas firing rockets into Israel, Israel attacking Hamas and non-combatant citizens of Gaza and Israel 
displaced from their homes, injured and killed. I would have removed the, where, uh, the whereas clause that has to do with uh, the $14 billion because it's, uh, there has been uh, no pledge of that uh, money because there has been no legislation on it. Um, and I was going to propose some changes that I thought would strengthen the uh, resolved clause. I could not do any of those things because of the way that the open meeting law prohibited us from being able to act. And um, I therefore um, am really troubled by what is happening. So uh, Andy, I believe that if you wanted to place those motions on the table, you could, we'll seek a second. Uh, do you have them in? Uh, uh, Athena, can you place them in the motion that's on the table? Or she does have them. I don't have these incorporated into the right. Motion please presented please by go the to the top of the screen. The first two. Of, I'm not. I'm. I do, I'm not going to deal with this. And took twenty five two hundred and fifty hostages. The first two are the whereas Hamas positioned its military assets in Gaza such that many Gaza residents are in harm's way. The second and whereas fighting continues on both sides with Hamas firing rockets into Israel, Israel attacking Hamas and non-combatant citizens of Gaza and Israel displaced from their homes, injured and killed and can we stop there and just see if there's a second for that? Andy, do you want to place that in motion? I will place that in motion. Is there a second for those two? Second, Rooney. Okay, thank you. Would you like to speak to your motion, Andy? Yes. Um, I think that you've gotten the general theme of what I was proposing to do, but I think that what we have heard today is the recognition from several speakers that we've heard along the way that uh, what is happening, which is totally egregious, it requires the joint action of both the Palestinians as represented by Hamas, who've been the lead combatants, and the Israelis who've been under the direction of the current government of Israel acting in a totally outrageous way that um, there has, that there needs to be um, action that taken that is recognizing both that um, that this is a something that calls on uh, both the both the Palestinians through Hamas and particularly Hamas because I think that there are many innocent Palestinians who have been injured by outrageous actions of Hamas and the Israelis. Okay. And uh, that's the basis of this request. Are there any other comments? The motion, the motion to amend has been made and seconded. George Ryan. Actually, my comments are for later. So I have no comment on this at the moment. Okay, so the motion has been made and seconded. Uh, if there are no other comments, we would move to vote on the amendments to the main motion. Okay. Uh, we are going to move to that vote. And you're voting to add the two phrases that you see on the screen in pink. We're going to start with Bob Hegner. Aye. Councillor Lord. Lord aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. If you cannot be silent, we will have to end the meeting. Okay. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. 
No. Pat DeAngelis. No. Anna Devlin Gothier. No. At Councilor Ette. Yes. Lynn Griesmer is an aye. Councilor Haneke. No. The amendment passes. We go back to the original resolution, the original motion. Stop! So we can do this. You need. I didn't stop. stop. One of the things we that people need to realize is no matter when you bring a, a resolution to the council, we have the right to debate it and we have the right to amend it. We fully respect the amount of work all of you have put into this. Heather has her hand up. Heather. I do apologize um, at my newness of this political debate. I got confused and I need to change my vote, please. Okay. My vote is a uh, no. Okay. Thank you. It still passes. We're back to the original motion. Are there any other motions? Mandy Joe? I would request that we take a two minute recess. Okay. Maybe because we've been going for four hours. <laughs> I completely understand. <laughs> so go out, go to the right, through the door, make sure that door does not lock on you, and it's on the right. That's the first door. <laughs> Please return to your seats so we can continue the meeting. You're being really disrespectful. Please can please return to your seats.
We're going to continue to pause for a moment while one of our counselors has taken a break. And I also, um, the town manager has consulted with the custodial staff and they are giving an extension to 11. That means we pay them over time. Okay. That's okay. That's fine. Okay. They deserve it. Okay. Um, Pat. I make a motion. A motion to amend to remove the phrases community sponsors more than 760 Amherst residents. See attached list. Councilor sponsors Patricia DeAngelis, Alicia Walker, and Mandy Jo Haneke, and the attached list of community sponsors at the end of this of the resolution. This is no longer our resolution. I second that. Second Walker. No, it won't work that way. Motion's been made. Uh, wait a minute. We have the other and it's been there. seconded. May I, I speak to it? Yes, you can. Please. Yes, hand is please. Up. Mandy Jo. Are, Pat, did you want to speak to it? Mandy wants to speak. I don't Mandy Jo. said what no. I need to say. Pat said what she needed to say. Um, I believe. I may have more. Rule, Council Rule of Procedure 8.8 .8, Withdrawal of Measures requires that sponsors must have a written request to withdraw a measure and that that measure can only be withdrawn if the withdrawal is on in the Council agenda meeting, even though no vote is required. So in order for us to withdraw our sponsorship, we cannot invoke Rule 8.8 .8 .8 under the rules. We need to move to amend this resolution to withdraw our sponsorship. I request that the council grant us the ability to withdraw our sponsorship by voting for this motion to amend. So, in fact, what we need to do is waive that rule. No, we just need to vote on that motion. No, we just need to vote on the motion that's on the left. I'm going to have my hand raised, Jen. Pat. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to quote um, a resident. Your counselors. I want to write one last time to express my hope that council will vote on the resolution as written without stripping it of its parts 
that acknowledge that Palestinian civilians are equally deserving of protection under international law. And these rights can never be conditional on the actions of any group opposing any of the moderate points in this resolution would make an official town statement that Palestinians are less deserving of basic human rights that are supposed to be universal. Human rights must be protected whether the civilians are Israeli or Palestinian or any other group. We cannot compromise on this. This is a fact recognized by over a thousand Amherst residents, businesses, religious institutions, and organizations who have put their names to this cautiously considered wording. I ask you to pass this resolution without stripping it of its basic important acknowledgement of our grief and humanity. We have just failed to recognize the humanity. We have tried to place blame instead of listening to the voices and honoring the lives of the Palestinian people. I am ashamed of us. I think that uh, we've been trying to find some middle ground here and well no excuse me don't please do not interrupt we can see that we're being pressured point of order is this a comment on the motion to amend is this a comment on the motion to amend no because isn't debate on the motion to amend right now debate is on the motion to amend and the motion to amend is to remove the sponsors names from yes. this document and we just had a speech that was saying exactly what about that i didn't quite in other words uh she was supposed to speak to why she wanted her name removed and why you want That's your names removed. That's why I wanted the names removed. Because That's would... why the other 700 and some right. re residents wanted their names removed okay. because it is no longer the resolution that we are asking yeah. this town to pass. It is no longer a resolution that listens to the voice or supports Palestinian people. Excuse me, we must speak as we are asked to speak. Right. Councilor Ryan, did you finish what you uh, had well, to say? Well, his computers just died. So uh, I don't know if that's a message from someone, but um, <laughs> um, I'm finished for the moment and I'll raise my hand if I need to speak again. Thank you. Pam Burney. Thank you. We've, we, heard, we heard from from all sides tonight and I'm looking at the inclusion of the two phrases that were just added, which in my, in my opinion does nothing to diminish the needs, the humanity of the Palestinian people who are in, let me finish. I'm trying to, I'm trying to collect my thoughts on this. What it does is it, is it says there are factors that are causing this. And when I, when I read the phrase about Hamas positioning its equipment, it is as true as every other statement that has been made tonight. It is, it is a joint resolution that we are crafting because there are people that we heard from tonight that were extremely pointed in their arguments about the role of Hamas in this situation. My, my. Stop. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to understand that making these two points does not diminish what the town of Amherst says should happen, which is a ceasefire, and that is the bottom line at that. And now, therefore, has not changed except for what the sponsors brought forward. I, 
I find it hard to believe that every person that that endorses this resolution cannot accept those changes because it, it reflects. Shh, shh, please. Thank please. you. I am in as much pain and I have as much anger as you, but I need you to be quiet. Please, if you need to, stick your fingers up, down, sideways, but or whatever, but keep it silent. Thank you. Pam, did you finish your comments? I guess so. Lynn. Excuse me, yes. I don't see how that was speaking to the question on the floor of the amendment, which is to have removed the sponsors' names. That's what we're talking about right now. Okay. The amendment on the floor is to remove the sponsors' names, both the 760 and the counselor sponsors. Are there any other comments with regard to that? Councilor Walker. Um, yes, I just also wanted to speak to why I would like to be removed as a sponsor. Um, I have met with a lot of residents from this town, some of them being Palestinian residents. And my goal here is to uplift and center the Palestinian residents in Amherst at this time. We have had conversations. We have made amendments together that we thought have taken into consideration some of the feedback that we have gotten from other residents in this town. And we are unwilling to make amendments like this because there is no justification for what is happening. There is no reason, there is no justification, there cannot be one. And so trying to add sentences that sort of hint at a justification for the loss of life that is happening in Gaza does not center and uplift the Palestinian residents in Amherst who we have spoken with, who we have met with, who are hurting who are losing family members and loved ones. This is belittling and silencing their voices. We have already made a resolution that states some of the things that we are adding to this resolution. It is unnecessary. It is watering it down. It is taking away the central focus of the resolution. This is not what the sponsor signed on for. This is not what I signed on for. I am here as a representative for my community, as an at-large counselor to represent constituents across the town, and I will stand behind them. Are there any other comments from counselors? Jennifer Taub? Oh, it may not be, I, I apologize if it's not speaking precisely to the motion, but it, it, to, it would seem that the heart of the motion is that we, the Amherst Town Council, call for an immediate and sustained mm -hmm. ceasefire in That's Gaza. That's what and, we're and, talking about. Okay. The motion. Well, it was stated that we had stripped the resolution, and it it seems like that is the what the resolution is asking for, and we haven't touched that. Councilor Shane, I, I have. Just a question. Do we have a resolution at all if the sponsors have dropped off completely? No. Nope. nope. So is there no resolution at all that we would be voting on tonight? It's, a, it's, it's, a, question, it's a question rather than um, a conclusion. It's a question. I was prepared to vote right. yes on the amended resolution that we saw th that came from that, that the sponsors did. I thought they were fairly minor changes and they worked. So um, I think this is an unfortunate turn of events in my opinion. One of the options is that the move to take the resolution, to remove the sponsors be tabled for the moment and we go back to the additional two paragraphs and see if it passes. And if it passes, then we would go back to the other. If it doesn't pass, then we are back to the original motion, except for the clarification that was added with regarding the original 
resolution regarding Hamas. Mandy Jo? I think it's a shame that there are three counselors that sponsored a resolution here that are asking to be removed as sponsors to the resolution and this council, our fellow counselors, are potentially going to say, no, you cannot remove your name as sponsors. When rule 8.8 .8 of our rules would allow us at the next meeting, if we postponed consideration of this to remove our names without a vote, we are asking to be able to do that tonight so that we don't have to postpone this using our right to postpone so that we under our rules can follow the rules and remove ourselves. It is a simple courtesy to your fellow counselors to accept that they no longer wish to sponsor this resolution and allow them to do that in an efficient manner within our rules of procedure. Now to answer Kathy, Councillor Shane's, Kathy Shane's question, rule 8.1A of our rules of procedure requires that a resolution have a councillor sponsor for the resolution to be in front of the council itself. Therefore, if we remove our names from the resolution and none of the other 10 councillors wish to put their names on as a sponsor, which they could all do, any one of you could do by making a motion to amend to add your name as a counselor sponsor, then the motion, then the resolution, I would argue would be improperly in front of the council tonight. But only until someone decides to add their name as a sponsor and actually sponsor the resolution themselves. Councillor Rooney. I do not want to see this resolution uh, turn into dust. Um, I, I think it's so close. I think I have, I have some very personal uh, opinions on it, um, which I have not shared tonight, but I would support I would support this. I would be happy to be a sponsor because I think it's I would like it to represent the community. I, I'm seeing reactions in the audience that somehow something is is something is worse than nothing. And I and I don't want to belittle that, but um, it, maybe we don't have a resolution then. Okay, the motion's on the table to remove the sponsors. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, we bring it to a vote. The, motion, the vote is only on the motion to remove all of the community sponsors and all of the councilor sponsors. We start with Councillor Lord. Lord, aye. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Aye. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Councillor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmer is aye. I'm not clear why. Councillor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Yes. Okay. The council sponsors and council community sponsors have been removed. We are now without a resolution.
point you on. Have Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Point of Point of order. I said the meeting is adjourned. No, George is calling a point of order. I'm sorry, point of order. Point. Pat, what is it you wanted to say? George. George, point of order. I had a question, just a procedural question, which hopefully someone can answer. If one or more uh, counselors this evening wish to put their name to the uh, resolution as it currently stands, would that be proper at this point? Excuse me. I'm not asking any This of you. is a Sorry question to the council. Yeah. This is a question to the council. No. Oh, yes. So I just, I just wonder what, what, if someone could clarify that for me, I'd appreciate it. But maybe we don't know, so. The question's been asked whether there are any counselors who want to put their name on the resolution. I and see no we... hands at this time. George, was there an additional question? Well, if, if it were permissible for a counselor to put their name on the current resolution as amended, I would be willing to put my name on that. I, I would like to have us with a resolution that while it doesn't do everything I would like, would, Excuse me, we right. need to have the decorum have of allowing the council yeah. to speak. Lynn, we can't really do this if this is the way the audience is going to. Excuse me. I think we're going to Excuse me. Excuse me. We have concluded public comment. I, I, fine. Go out and demonstrate. We have concluded public comment. It is time for the council to have its right to speak. Lynn, I suggest we take a recess. No, not to all of us. An atheist. 
May I suggest that perhaps some other counselors might like to speak? Thank you. George, was there anything else you would like to say at this time? Uh, Lynn, we cannot conduct our business in this kind of setting, so I would suggest we adjourn. Some of us might have had other things we might have liked to say that you would like to hear, but you have not allowed that. Uh, we can hear on Zoom. Point of order. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't. People on Zoom can't hear. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Now we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Jennifer, you had your hand up. Just to let you know, we couldn't hear you. Thank you. Kathy, you have your hand up. Um, I, I just wanted to say that if I had understood that there couldn't be any changes to it as presented, I probably would have voted differently on the two suggested amendments because I didn't perceive this, but I did not understand that we were, it was an up or down vote only as presented. Um, and just the other comment I want to make is I think the power of what you all have done is immense. And the Congress people getting it directly from 750,000 people is much more powerful than 13 counselors. I'm not saying the council doesn't matter. I'm just saying that your voices, whether I signed on to yours or not, but I, I did not understand that if we made any changes, um, I, I appreciated the changes that were made and I thought they were good ones. So um, I did not perceive that there would be this result. Anna, hold so on. My, my, question, Anna, hold my on. question is similar to what's being asked in the audience is that so with the understanding that the council sponsors are affixing the former council sponsors excuse me we're writing their name on this as written and that changes beyond what they had provided in their amendments would lead to them withdrawing the names their own names from the sponsorship of the resolution is there a procedural path forward where as we vote to rescind or vote to remove the prior amendment and I, i'm stuck because the council so, sponsors would have to add their names back first in order for us to consider that athena i believe that it's a vote to reconsider but i don't think it is because we don't have the information excuse me go ahead athena sorry a motion from the prevailing side can be considered at the same or the next regular meeting following the vote on the measure a motion from the non-prevailing side would have to come with additional information. Okay. The prevailing side in this case was vote to, ex excuse me, hold on. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Pat. Yeah, I'm, for, I'm forgetting what I wanted to say, which is not good. Uh, we never, we, the sponsors, all of us, removed our names because of the amendments that passed, not because additional amendments passed. If they were amendments that we could have accepted, we would have accepted them. But you cannot ask us to void the lives of Palestinian people. Okay, um, Pat, um, so the amendment that caused you to remove your names were Andy's amendments. Were Andy's amendments. Which passed. Okay. The prevailing side on that was the A's. Are there people from the A's who would like to ask for reconsideration for those two amendments? Kathy would like to. Kathy would like to vote to reconsider. Okay, I will second that vote. So now we go back to a vote to reconsider and the reconsideration is whether or not we're removing, whether or not we're adding Point those. of order, first you need to vote to reconsider and then you would okay. re-vote the amendment. Thank you. Is, there's been a vote made to, a motion made to reconsider. And it's been seconded. We now move to a discussion or is it undebatable? It's debatable. It's debatable? Okay. Um, are there any comments? George. This is a comment on the motion to reconsider whether or not we add those two amendments. George. Again, I'm back to the whole process here and how it violates everything that 
this council stands for in terms of how it does its business. There's a constant back and forth, a constant interruption, a constant um, involvement in our business that is not just, it's not proper, it's not appropriate. And so we are being bullied and being harassed into these actions. And I personally resent that deeply. The fact that I cannot make my own informed judgment in good conscience apparently is beyond the comprehension of most of you. And so you are constantly undermining that democracy by your refusal to allow us to do our business. The fact that we don't always do what you like is not our problem. Now, excuse we, me. Stop. So I, I would say to my colleagues, this Stop. is not the way we should do our business. You cannot make thoughtful and informed judgments in this kind of situation. Okay. We did have a vote. We voted for these amendments, which I took it, many of us felt made this a stronger and better resolution. The sponsors no longer wish to sponsor it, and they've withdrawn. We could have someone come forward. I would be willing to do so. Perhaps someone would join me and sponsor the current resolution as amended, and we could vote on that. But the idea of reconsidering a vote we just held because we're being, being no, we're being harassed and bullied. No, 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 Excuse no, no. Me. Excuse this kind me. of back and forth, Lynn, is simply not acceptable. And I don't see how we can do our business in this setting. Because the, no, Excuse no. Excuse me. I have heard from many people in my district, and the idea that you represent all of them is ludicrous. I've heard people in support of this. I've heard people against it. I've heard many people say it's none of our business. You tell me who's right. Do I get to do a count? Am I supposed to do, right? I ultimately have to make my decision in good conscience but you won't allow me that. And you won't respect it when I finally do make that decision. And that is outrageous, but you don't know that. You don't have any sense of shame. You're so full of your own self-righteousness oh. that you will tell us what to do. We basically work for you. The, the peop <laughs> That's right, the people in this room. But you are not the citizens of Amherst. You are just one small portion thereof. Lynn, I don't see how we can do our business in this context. Anna? Your comment. Um, so the the vote to reconsider, uh, in my mind, I appreciate this the motion and the second. If there wasn't one, as someone on the non prevailing side, I was going to say that the new inf we got new information from the sponsors um, in terms of what this looked like going forward. But I think I will please beg of the folks who are here. I'm so grateful you're here, and please, 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 if you can try to give us, I know we don't deserve your grace at this point, but if you can give us a little bit more of it, I would appreciate it um, uh, because I'd, I'd like to continue to try to figure out the path forward here. I think the vote to reconsider, the sponsors wrote this. They are not under any obligation to keep their names on something they don't agree with. They have every right to remove their names from this and they can explain why. Um, in this instance, it means that this resolution did not have support to move forward. And so I think this vote to reconsider is very smart because it allows our sponsors to reaffirm what they wanted when they wrote, when they signed on and brought this forward along with the community members. So I think the vote to reconsider makes a lot of sense here, given the counselor's um, apparent wishes for, for the maintenance of how this resolution was written. Andy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I, I feel like I haven't been heard, haven't been listened to. Uh, one thing that uh, everybody, that, that I think George was trying to say is that we were elected by the entire community. And as any legislative body, we have a responsibility to act as a, as a body to try and craft a resolution to problems that are, that are presented to us. There is not a major community that I know of that passed a resolution on this issue that has not had amendments to the resolution that happened within its council. 
Um, certainly Cambridge did. I believe that Northampton did not pass the original resolution that was presented to it. Um, and But in the end, the resolution, if it's a resolution of the council, has to belong to the council. And I think that that's what is um, getting lost here in the intent. I think that we all were looking to end the evening with a resolution that was calling for an immediate ceasefire. But we were all looking for a resolution that would try and end the horrible things that are happening in the Middle East. And that um, because of the way that this is transpiring, we seem to be losing that battle. And um, so I, I am very concerned because I think that uh, what is happening here has the potential of really destroying um, the confidence that this community as a whole, and I'm not talking about just people in this room, I'm talking about the community as a whole, is going to have in our form of government. And I think that's what's really the most painful part of this whole thing for me. Um, if uh, th there is a motion on the table now to reconsider the motions that I made, I think that that should go forward and be voted on. That will be an action of the council and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, I, I feel like that uh, I really appreciate all of the work that went into the motion that uh, was presented, but I felt that there were some things that could make it stronger to represent the entire community and all of the people that we heard. Uh, I think the, uh, and uh, the, I don't know that this one does, but you know, I don't, if the will of the council is to come back and um, say um, that they're reconsidering the motion um, and that um, they're, um, so be it. Um, that will, and then if somebody calls for a vote on the motion, we'll each vote on the motion as we, as we deem appropriate. Uh, and I, uh, but I just wanted to sort of urge all of you to remember that um, a motion gets presented to the council, but it is an action of the council. And if the council loses the ability to deliberate and carefully consider as they have other councils on this very issue um, that it is really not spoken for the our for a form of government that has a representative body if you can't allow the representative body to act as such. So um, with that said, um, I would urge the council um, after discussion proceed to its vote. So the motion on the floor is to reconsider. It's been made and seconded. Pam Rooney. Do the vote. Do the vote first. I didn't hear you. Do the vote first. Okay. All right. We're going to begin the vote with Councillor, I don't even know where I am. Uh, Councillor Hegner. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Yes to reconsider. Yes to reconsider. Councillor Lord. Yes. To reconsider. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. No. Uh, Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes to reconsider. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Councillor Ette. Aye. Lynn Griesmerson. Aye. Mandy Johanneke. Aye. Vote, motion to reconsider is passed uh, with 12 in favor and one opposed. We're going to now go to the actual motion. The motion that was put on the table was to add the two phrases, whereas. Um, so if you vote 
and they're shown right here. If you vote to include them, you vote aye. If you vote to not include them, you vote nay. Are there comments that people would like to make? I'm seeing a hand from Pam Rooney. Thank you. I would like to make a friendly amendment to this motion that I would remove the second whereas, but keep the first one. I think Hamas has a role in this. Hamas has some responsibility in this. And I think recognizing Hamas's role in no way diminishes the rest of the, the resolution. I would, I would be very happy to vote for this resolution with this recognition that Hamas has some responsibility. Is there a second? I would second. Okay, so the second, the, the motion at this point would be to remove the second one but not the first. Okay. Is there other comments, Pat? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Pam. You've already spoken to your motion, Pat. I'm, I'm going to repeat myself. Putting that, leaving the whereas Hamas positioned its military, blah 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 is still diminishing the voices of the Palestinian people, diminishing the actions. What we, when we made the resolution in October, we were talking, we felt it was justified for Israel to respond to Hamas's terrorist and brutal attack. It was unanimous. But Israel, its military, its government, has stepped over the line. So it's not justice, it's vengeance. And it's ongoing and deadly, even as we sit here and argue. Okay. That whereas is inappropriate, wrong, and should not be approved. Uh, Anna. When we passed the resolution on October 16th, I have a very clear memory of Pat asking to add a clause or whereas into that resolution, and I was trying to pull it up, um, talking about the, the impact on the residents, uh, on Palestinians, and that modification was not added to our ultimate resolution for the reason that that resolution was about condemning Hamas's attack on Israel. In that same logic, in that same vein, it should not go the other way. We did that one. Um, and we kept it specific to the topic that it was supposed to be about. This one should be in the same direction. Could you please keep the thing up on the screen, Athena? Thank you. Uh, Jennifer? Yeah, is it up? Um, so I was actually, because I was going to ask the question of could they be separated and we could vote individually, I was actually... Um, would be willing to um, not have the first whereas, but the second is not, it, it's just a fact. Fighting is continuing on both sides. There have been more than 11,000 rockets Hamas has fired into Israel. I don't know why we, that, that's just a fact. It's not, and the first my, resolution, so that, that would be my request if we could keep the second and not the first. All right, right now we're voting to re actually we're voting to the way it is. We didn't split the motion. No, it's the, the motion on the floor is a motion to amend Andy's motion to remove his second whereas. Right. Um, so are there any other council comments? So the motion on the floor is to remove, is to keep the first and to remove the second. No, 
the motion on the floor was to remove both. Yes. Yes. No. And then no. somebody Originally. made another Wait a motion. Mandy keeps it in her head. Hang on. The motion, the motion is to remove both. No. 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 Just a second. Okay. We move to reconsider Andy's motion. Andy's motion was to add two whereas clauses. Pam Rooney just moved to remove from Andy's motion the yeah. second whereas clause. So the motion on the floor is to amend Andy's motion to remove the second whereas clause. If that motion passes, the council will still need to vote on Andy's motion, which would only include the first whereas clause. If the motion, if Pam Rooney's motion to amend fails, the motion on the floor would be Andy's motion to add two clauses instead of one clause. Right. So the motion on the floor is the one that you see on the screen, which is to remove the second one. Okay. Questions? Anna. Is there anything preventing a further motion to remove the first clause? I'm serious. That's a, I actually do mean I, that question. I understand why you're asking that question. I would. It impacts how I vote on this question. Um, so can I answer that? Yes. One, Please, Mandy, if you've got an answer. So there would be. It, after this, there's two right. motion to amends on the floor now, That's so we right. cannot accept a second exactly. one right now under the Thank rules. You. But if this one passes or fails, well, if this one passes, there's one whereas clause on the motion to amend. Right. It would seem the if you wanted to not add that one, you would not move to amend Andy's motion to remove that one. You would just vote against Andy's motion on the floor. If this one fails and there are two motions, there are two clauses remaining in Andy's motion, then it could make sense to make a motion to amend to remove the first one from his motion. So I have a question before we move. And it was my understanding that you as the three sponsors did not want either of these. Is that correct? Yes. And therefore the motion to reconsider was the motion to put to to revote on whether or not these would be amendments to the original, and then a motion was made to just remove one but not the other. Am I getting all that right? Okay, Pam, you put the motion on the floor to remove one, not the other. My understanding is that the counselors who are sponsors would still want to remove their names if we leave one in, but take the other out. Point of order, our names are still not on this resolution. We have not That's reconsidered true. that motion. That's true. All right. All right, the motion is to remove one. George, you have your hand up. I think what is at issue is whether there should be any recognition of the role of Hamas in the tragedy of Gaza. And, um, and the, Excuse uh, me, these please. two amendments that were approved by this body just a few minutes ago were an attempt, I felt, by a number of us to do that and create what we felt was a more balanced um, resolution that would win greater approval in the community at large, though clearly not in this room. And that's why they passed. And now there's been an attempt to remove one or two of these, but it seems whether it's one or two is immaterial, the real, because both of them are statements of fact. Um, the question is whether this body, in order to create, I think, a more balanced uh, resolution and one that reflects our consensual uh, discussion, um, whether we want to keep them in or not. And I personally would like to keep them in. And I hope that my colleagues will continue to vote that way when we get to that point. Um, I would just suggest to my colleague at my left that perhaps just letting the two, just removing her motion and just letting us vote up or down on these two would be perhaps the quickest way to resolve this matter. 
Um, I understand she meant well, but I, quite frankly, at this point, um, I probably wouldn't vote to support it. Um, I would like us to simply vote the or nay. Do we want to make some kind of statement about the involvement of Hamas and all this, uh, which I believe we should do, or do we not? And that's, I think, whether it's one or two. So um, Pam, the question is whether or not you remove your motion. I remove my motion. And do the person who seconded it? That is me, and yes, I agree. Okay, with that. so we but take the understand. strikes off of this. We're back to the motion for reconsideration. We have voted to reconsider, and now we're going to reconsider whether or not these two whereases will be kept in the resolution. If you vote yes, they stay in. If you vote no, they go out. Yes? No. Is that correct? <laughs> no, it's not. The motion on the floor now, Athena can correct me, is to amend to remove the phrase, no, to amend to add the two whereas clauses. A yes vote adds the whereas yeah. clauses, a no vote. OK, is that what you said? That is okay. what I said. Thank I, you. I have another comment. OK, Mandy Jo. It seems to me. The council wants to amend the motion, but wants to wants to amend the resolution because they're uncomfortable with it as a potential majority, given how they voted on these two whereases. Yet they want to insist or hope that the council sponsors will continue to sponsor a motion they do not support. And when the council sponsors said, we don't support those amendments and we no longer support this resolution, the rest of the councilors said, oh, what should we do? And instead of a counselor stepping up and making a motion to amend to add the phrase counselor sponsor and then putting their name on it, they went back to, should we add these two whereases? If you're not willing to put your name on the sponsorship as a sponsorship to this resolution, then don't add the whereas clauses because the three counselor sponsors that started this evening will continue to have our names removed if those whereas clauses are added. And if those whereas clauses are added and no one is willing to sponsor it, we go back to where we were, which is in, frankly, a motion that is inappropriately in front of the council under our rules. Jennifer. Uh, I thought Councillor Ryan said he would be a sponsor. Yes, he did. You have not moved to amend to do that. I think we got derailed at that point. No, blame elsewhere. It was kind of hard to make your voice heard. All right. The motion on the floor at this point is whether or not you support keeping these in or not. It was a motion to reconsider that vote. Okay. George or Mandy Jo? If I may? Yes, please. As I said just a moment ago, and I'll make it brief, I think this was an attempt by a number of us in good conscience to support this, but to make it stronger in our view and to make it more balanced. I realize that not everyone agrees with that, and that's why we're going to have this vote. We've already voted once. We will vote again. I would urge my colleagues to maintain their fortitude. This needs to be a more balanced resolution. We represent everyone in the town of Amherst, not just the people in this room. And so I hope that you will continue and that you will vote to keep these two whereas is in as we did originally. Are there any other comments? Okay. Councilor Walker. I just wanna say again that we have already passed a resolution condemning Hamas. We do not need to further condemn Hamas in order to support Palestinians. It doesn't, it, it adds no value to this resolution at all. So it's unnecessary. And I just wanna say that I think this council really needs to learn how to get out of its own way to support and uplift the voices of all residents. It doesn't look the same all of the time. There is a difference. We have already supported the residents who wanted us to condemn Hamas. That resolution still stands. We are now looking to tell or signal to the residents in this town that we value the lives of Palestinians. 
those things are not mutually exclusive. Two things can be true at the same time. And this one resolution does not need to signal all of those things. That's why we have different resolutions. So I, I ask my colleagues on this council to think about where you land and where your privilege is and to think about how you can use your privilege and your role to uplift marginalized voices in this community because they are being overlooked and they are being silenced right now. Our own opinion doesn't always matter. It doesn't always matter. And I am willing Excuse to say that me. not all of these things came directly from me. I am supporting the residents of my town and that is okay too. Thanks. Uh, Jennifer. As to me, this resolution is, which is, we are upholding and has not been changed in the resolution. We call for an immediate and sustained ceasefire in Gaza and end to the Israeli military siege of the Gaza Strip, the release of the hostages and detainees on both sides, the removal of obstacles to urgently needed humanitarian aid entering Gaza and an end to unconditional, although I think that wording has been changed, United States military aid to the Israeli government. That is the, to me, that is the crux of this resolution and we have not changed a word of that. This is calling, what is important is to call for a ceasefire and humanitarian aid and release of the hostages. So I stand by that and that has not one word of that has been touched in any of the proposed amendments. So, excuse me. Thank you. George, you still had your hand up? Sorry. Okay. The vote before us is the reconsideration. I have my hand up, but I'm not sure what I'm going to say. Other oh, than... I'm sorry, Pat. I didn't That's see. right. I, I know. That's fine. Pa Pat. Blame. Right. Blame and balance. It's very interesting that we think balancing diminishes voice. Balancing diminishes the reality of people in Israel and Palestine who are fighting, working together to, to create a ceasefire, to create a different kind of community. Palestinians in Israel are like the black citizens of the United States right. in terms of how they are treated, Jim Crow. And I, I didn't want to go here, but we pat ourselves on the back because we're balanced. I almost said the F word I get in trouble for. The we cannot be balanced on this issue. Right. We need to but stop blaming and listen to the people who are being destroyed and who Netanyahu has said are animals and he would not rest and his government would not rest until they were destroyed. Just like you quoted or people quoted things from Hamas and Hamas sickens me because of how, I'm, because of how it uses Palestinian people for its own power, for its own gain. But Netanyahu is doing the same thing. And we need to balance? What are we balancing? Human lives. The motion on the floor is to reconsider this whether or not these remain in. If you vote yes, they remain in. If you vote no, they are removed. Are there any other questions? I'm going to start the motion, The in this case, with Councillor Lord. Lord, no. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councilor Ryan. Yes. Kathy Shane. No. Please, this is audience, you do not respond this is, this is for another strong. person. Thank you. Andy Steinberg. Yes. 
Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. No. Pat DeAngelis. No. Anna Devlin Gothier. No. Councillor Ette. Yes. Lynn Griesmer. I pass. Councillor Haneke? No. Bob Hagner? No. Lynn Griesmer's a no. It's eight. So that these no longer are part of it. The hour is now 11.30. So, so let's vote, Paul. No, at this point, there's no sponsors. Well, we're voting to put our names back on. Moving to put... Huh? I'm sorry. Mandy Joe. thank you. I move to amend to add the phrases community sponsors more than 760 Amherst residents see attached list and council sponsors Pat Patricia DeAngelis, Alicia Walker, and Mandy Jo Haneke, and add the attached list of community sponsors at the end of the resolution back in. Is there a second? I second that. Uh, okay, are there any further discussion? I'm gonna to move to a vote on that. That is just to put the sponsors' names back on both community and uh, residents. Uh, uh, Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Yes. Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. Aye. And Anna Devon Gothier. Aye. Councillor Ette. Yes. Lynn Griesmer. Aye. Mandy Joe Haneke. Aye. And Councillor Haneke. Uh, Bob Hagner. Yes. And Councillor Lord. Aye. That's unanimous. We move to the original motion, which is the vote on the actual resolution. Mandy Joe, you have your hand up. Thank you. Are there any other comments? We're moving to the vote on the actual resolution. Um, and we're going to start with Councillor Ryan. No. I'm sorry. Um, Councillor Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. No. Councillor Taub. Abstaining. Alicia Walker. Yes. Pat, Pat DeAngelis. Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier. Aye. Councillor Ette. No. Lynn Griesmer. I'm going to hold uh, Councillor Haneke. Aye. Bob Hegner. Yes. Councillor Lord. Yes. Pam Rooney. Yes. Councillor Ryan. Oh, I already did Councillor Ryan. We're back That's to Councillor Griesmer. Reluctantly, yes. Don't, don't <laughs> The meeting is adjourned.